203 on uh, Tuesday, October 13th, and I'm going to call the uh, workshop to order for the Board of County Commissioners, and I'm going to uh, ask that Commissioner Harvey give our invocation and our pledge was be led then by uh, Bill Pickens. Let's bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity today to do the county's business. We pray, Lord, as in this workshop that all things will be done decently and in order, and we'll gain knowledge directly from your throne room today, directly from you. And Father, we thank you so much that we can call upon you as a free nation to be with us, to guide us, and to protect us. And Father, we ask all these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Harvey and Commissioner Pickens. We're going to move into a public comment concerning the workshop. This portion of the agenda is designed to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. It is not reasonable to expect that the board will engage in debate or deliberation about matters on which the board has received no prior information as part of the agenda. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Is there any uh, public comment today? Seeing none, we'll close public comment um, and we will recess the Board of County Commissioners workshop and convene the Port Authority workshop. Uh, <clears throat> Before we move into public comment, uh, item E on the Board of County Commissioners workshop, which are the um, splash pad recirculatory systems for the water. Um, I think that needs to be discussed under the Port Authority because uh, splash pad is the Port Authority's property. Okay. So um, I'm, let's see, I probably should take public comment for the port first and then do that. Is there anybody here today that would like to discuss the Port Authority business under public comment. Seeing none, uh, we'll move item E up to uh, next um, under the uh, regular workshop agenda and, uh, and discuss the uh, splash pad. Who's taking that today? Is it Ms. Young? Oh, Kevin, okay. Mr. Stevens, please come forward. Please go ahead, Kevin. Uh, no, sir. Uh, the uh, item today is uh, twofold, as you can see from the agenda item. Uh, one is to talk about the closing date of the splash pad, uh, which uh, we were looking at approximately Friday, November the 13th, uh, as the last day the splash pad will be open for this season. Uh, and then also get some guidance on what the commission's will is for general open and closing times of the year. Thank you. Thank you, I guess. Um, <laughs> And uh, so, you know, like a typical April to October time frame or something like that. Uh, but first off, the, uh, the closing date, which, again, that gives us uh, through uh, the Veterans Day holiday to finish it up. I think that's fine by me. Does anybody else have a problem with that? No problem. Just, okay. No problem with that. Kevin, I think that uh, this commissioner would just like to see you go ahead and do it at times that you feel like is adequate as long uh, working with your supervisory staff. Yes, sir. Unless you actually want a schedule set by the board. I mean, we don't schedule when other parks open or close or any of that. So. No, sir. No, sir. And I'm fine with that. Uh, the other item, as you can see from the agenda, is uh, we initially discussed when we uh, got the splash pad uh, the possibility of converting that over to a recirculating system instead of the current drain away system that it is now. Um, <coughs> the, uh, we got the final numbers back from the contractor, Bliss Products, who constructed the splash pad. Uh, for us, and as you can see from the packet, uh, his number is approximately $115,000. Uh, this became important uh, when I received a phone call um, from the city of Palatka that, that we were going to be getting a $7,000 water bill for the month of August, basically. Uh, we have a water bill that I've attached to the packet, but that's really, <clears throat> even though it, it says it's for 59 billing days, it's really only for 30 days because we didn't open the splash pad until August 12th. And so that August through September. 
Um, so are they are they uh, charging us the sewer charge along with the water, even though we're not dumping no, any water? water no, sir, they are not charging water us for the sewer. No, sir. Yes, water only. Uh, <clears throat> so the as you can see from the the calculations that we kind of did with uh, conversing with the the city of Palatka, and uh, I also ran some of these numbers by Mr. Reynolds just to double check. Um, <coughs> so we're looking at approximately thirty-five, forty thousand dollars a year. Uh, for water usage for the, the time period of being open, approximately six months. Kevin, my question would be is when we were going through this process to start with, and I, th I was thinking that they, we already plumbed it to, to tie into the recirculatory system, but we just didn't do it at that time. We, and so what, do we know what the number was at that time? Because I didn't believe it was 115,000. It was more right. like 60 or 70, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. Depending on which option we chose, it was between 50 and 70,000. And, and I did make a couple of phone calls because that number seemed a little high to me as well. Uh, and I talked with actually the, the subcontractor that they're going to go through and, and had a conversation with them. And uh, the difference is between doing it while they were on site um, is now they're having to call all the contractors back in bring all the equipment back in, bring everybody back in, instead of doing it while they were there to do the work uh, for the system itself. But that shouldn't cost $50,000, Kevin. I think we might need to research this a little further. Do uh, you have something to add, Commissioner Rolls? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, I, I, I went online and looked at uh, Backpack in Jacksonville. There's a company called, uh, if you're a pool operator, you probably dealt with their equipment. Um, I, I would personally like to see us reach out to someone like that. Um, if, if, in fact, they ran the lines out like we asked and prepped this thing for, so all they have to do is connect the suction and discharge back, put, put the holding tank in, in um, for filtration, and then our chemical feeds, whatever they might be, you're not looking anywhere near fifty to $60,000, let alone one hundred and fifteen. dollars So if, um, unless they didn't put the curb around, and now they're going to have to come in and rebuild the curb and, and sl re-slope it, I can't imagine how they would get to $115,000. I actually called <coughs> Compact Filtration, who is the sub who did all this work for us initially. And they're <coughs> the ones who I tried to see if we could just go straight through them. But they are uh, only a sub. They have to be contracted out, and then they come in to do the work. So, And I think the backpack is along with Compact. They're kind of a sister company. So I did reach out to them to, to check those numbers. I can certainly reach out to a, another uh, another group or so um, to see if anybody else has uh, that capability. Uh, but this is well, what back, we backpack have. Backpack sells. You can, you can buy a backpack system. They'll sell you the system. Yes, sir. It's a matter of digging a hole in the ground and setting the whole whole tank and box, everything. I so, completely uh, agree. Yeah. I think that uh, we need to look at this a little harder and a little farther. We got time. Uh, it's not. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going to just run it like it is through uh, closing date in November. And then at that point, we need to look at it not like it's an emergency situation, but actually find somebody that has the ability to do this. And there's a lot of people that do this. Um, sure. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kevin, didn't they give us a diagram of how they laid those pipes out? Uh, mm -hmm. They did with the, uh, once we chose the option for the splash pad, they gave us the diagram for that. Yes. So we should know what's, go what's underground right there. Yes, sir. Okay, good. But, but they were supposed to it give, they were supposed to put pipes there for a recirculatory system. That was part of the deal. Was yes, that sir. done? As far as I know, it was. I wasn't there when they were actually on site building and digging the, the trenches. But um, everything is there. From what was explained to me by Compact is, uh, there's going to now have to be a concrete slab with a shed put in because this, is, this has to hold the, the chemicals that are going to, some of those are dry chemicals that are going to have to be put into the water supply for the recirculation system along with the stinner pumps, the parasolic pumps. Uh, all that's going to have to be housed inside of a dry shed area uh, to keep it out of the elements. Uh, so that's going to be part of it as well. Mr. Chairman, if I might. Yes, uh, I think Mr. Pickens was next, uh, Commissioner. Go ahead, and then go ahead and finish, Jeff. I'll go ahead, Jeff. He asked you to go ahead. I, I built a commercial pool up in Jacksonville that was 46,000 gallons, and it had a backpack system in that one as well. And everything was stored inside of what we call the doghouse. Had the pumps, the stinner pumps, everything. The only thing outside was the two tanks that went in the ground. They were very small for your um, uh, your, your, your acid and your um, chlor liquid chlorine, if we go with um, liquid. But um, I... I I don't know why we'd be thinking that direction to have anything vertical. I, I think that we would be much better off having something that's on the ground, easier to service, don't have to worry about the building. Anytime you put chemicals like that inside of a building, the building's going to get eaten up. 
but I, I'd, and I'll be more than happy to work with you on this. Um, but I, you know, I, I'll, I'll reach out to the back. But can you get me an as-built set of drawings? If I have the as-built, I, I could probably help you out a lot. I, I could certainly look for those. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Pickens. Kevin, when we discussed this, um, I guess it was yesterday, um, you did say if we, when we go to the system, which I think we're going to have to with the amount of water uses, is it going to restrict the usage of this facility? or the it, It'll certainly put more limitations on what we have. Um, when you go to a recirculating system, you have what's called a bather load. So you can only have so many people on site. Uh, if you go to a swimming pool at a hotel, it says only 20 people at a time. Uh, once you go to a recirculating system, you can only have so many people in the splash pad area at one time because you, it's the calculation of how quickly the water can get cleaned and disinfected and then be used again. And so it would place a limit on how many people could be in the splash pad area at one time. Uh, you would also have to take uh, Department of Health uh, chemical readings three times a day uh, to check the pH and chlorine levels of it. Uh, you know, they, they would come inspect it uh, on a regular basis to make sure that we're still within the, the guidelines, the parameters of what they set for us. So it, it would have some, some changes, some effects on us as well. Well, I, uh, if Commissioner Rawls meant, was serious in what yeah. he just said, I believe that that's the route we need to move next. I need, we, uh, we need to try to find the as built. We need to make sure that they pipe this forward with circulatory system because of my understanding that was part of the deal. And uh, if they didn't and it was in the contract, we need to talk to them about it and then let uh, Commissioner Rawls try to help us go out for bids on some type. Maybe he can help us come up with a packet that we can send out on the street for bids without hiring a full another engineer for a recirculatory system. And so um, so I, it's, it, this is not groundbreaking for this board. We have uh, done it on many occasions, let a commissioner take a project and run with it to the degree that it needs to come back to the board. So. Uh, thank you for the... Uh, Can I ask you one more question real quick? Yes, sir. Is there any consideration, I couldn't find in here, any consideration for a holding tank? Their holding tanks were going to be back behind the restroom building that's currently there. That's where they were going to have the... How many uh, gallons? Again, the, the water table in that area is, is so high. Uh, that's why we had to have them come back and move the valve system and solenoid system out of the ground and up on the side of the building because the water table is just crazy high over there. Yeah, that's what... So, but so are, they, are they looking at any like a 500 gallon reservoir that? So you I have, don't think yeah I don't think it was that large uh, to be honest with you Commissioner that, that might help out a lot you know uh, I, but I do know that they were looking at some sort of a holding tank for the water as it gets treated uh, before it goes back out. Yep. Well, even if it has to go above ground, we can build some vinyl fencing around it or something where it can be hid. So I mean, um, to to get a larger capacity. So with the uh, board's consensus, we're going to just let Commissioner Rawls get with uh, Kevin and try to work on that and come up with a proposal and a bid package that we can send out. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have something to add, Ms. Young? Yes, sir. Just, um, just briefly, just to let the commission know, um, you've given us the uh, ability to modify those hours, but I do want you to know that we did move the, the splash pad operational hours from 8 p.m. up to 7 p.m., and that's just a safety issue. It's getting darker earlier. Yeah. So there was just some concern on Facebook, and it, just so that you guys are informed and you know what's going on, that was simply an hour adjustment due to it getting um, darker earlier. Okay. After this weekend, it won't matter. Thank you. <laughs> cold. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, that's another thing. If it gets real cold out there, you might even consider moving it up from the middle of November even further up than that, like the 1st of November. Um, so... With that, we're going to uh, <clears throat> move into general discussion. And bef well, before we do, uh, Administrator Suggs, did you have a comment you wanted to make? Sir? Uh, no, sir. We can do it under general discussion if you like. Okay. Well, we're Go under ahead. general okay. discussion. Okay. Uh, if I could get Mr. Sullivan to join us up front, I'm going to give him a second to get here. He's kind of, uh, you know, <clears throat> incapacitated a little bit today. But... Uh, uh, just so you know, uh, we were contacted uh, recently, why it's not on your agenda, uh, to request a, uh, a resolution uh, to bring to the board in two weeks, a uh, resolution to support the uh, work project uh, opportunities that we have out at the barge port. Uh, so we, uh, we are contacted by uh, our federal lobbyists on behalf of the Army Corps of Engineers uh, to see if we could get a resolution of the board supporting our project out there. And if you have any questions, I've asked Mr. Solomon 
uh, it, you know, to kind of run down uh, where we're at with this. If you have any questions about our letters of support, the businesses that we may be able to, to assist out there and the things of that nature, try to revitalize and get some type of uh, feasibility study going out of the port utilizing federal dollars. Jam. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, I'll give a quick recap of the project, where we are, where we direct, where we're headed towards. Uh, so uh, you understand what we're talking about before they bring the resolution to you the, in a couple of weeks. Um, on one end, we have the United States uh, Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, they have our, they would be the ones that would set the water depth and uh, levels at the proper navigable levels so that we could actually, uh, the waters would be navigable by larger vessels than currently. As you know, the Shands Bridge is going to be raised. Uh, the schedule for that has actually been brought forward by Congress Congressman Ayoho. Uh, this would allow larger vehicles, especially commercial ve vessels, to be able to come down the St. John's River, including Putnam County and Palatka. Um, a federal lobbyist has secured uh, federal funds to initiate a drainage study by the Corps of Engineers to see what would need to be done to actually make those waters navigable uh, on a commercial level. Um, we have pursued and are still pursuing uh, a port study uh, that would uh, do a feasibility study of the current port, what would need to be done, what accommodations, what changes, what enhancements would be required to make it a commercially viable uh, facility. Um, once those two have been accomplished, we can then have the waters dredged and we uh, look for, towards a, re, uh, excuse me, a redevelopment project at the barge port. Um, we would probably seek a grant with the United States Department of Commerce, uh, their Economic Development Administration. They have already toured the facility, they're familiar with the facility, and they are interested in investing in the facility and developing the facility. So we already have some interest from the federal government to put money into the uh, project and to develop a viable uh, future, uh, port that we could not only take care of our current business partners in the community, but bring, attract new ones. Uh, when you consider that we have the port, the water vessel routes, we have the rail spur, and we have the highways, we could become a transportation hub for commercial products. Um, I'm just keeping this quick for you all. Uh, we already have several members of the community that have expressed support for this uh, venture. Uh, that includes Seminole Electric, Palatka Municipal Airport, the Northeast Florida Regional Council, Congressman Yoho, uh, the Putnam County Chamber of Com Commerce, Georgia Pacific, and Veritas Steel, and we are still uh, out there looking for additional support. So that's kind of a, in a nutshell, where we're looking at and the direction we'd like to go in. Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So what I'm hearing basically is two studies. One drainage study for the navigable waters of the St. John's, correct? And then a feasibility study for the entire area that we call the port out there. Is that what I'm hearing? That is correct, sir. So this morning we talked about the rail spur, and you just mentioned it again. That's something uh, that we could actually look at when we're looking at that feasibility study, if we can find funding for that. Um, because I think there's more, there's greater, I think there's a greater need than just one spur coming in, is what I'm trying to say. I think we could either, you know, it needs to be fixed, no doubt about that. Um, I mean, I think Je Commissioner Rawls mentioned that this morning even. So with that in mind, how close are I mean, the drainage study is pretty much something they're working on right now. Josh is working on right now, Mr. Gaviton. But what's the chances of the feasibility study? Well, we uh, thought uh, to get some funding uh, through the state. Uh, that did not fall through. Uh, we are looking at uh, other possibilities, possibly the local college and uh, as part of a business administration study. Uh, we're, we're looking at possibilities right now. I don't have... That's okay. This time. That's okay. But I'm excited work. about this. I mean, frankly, we've been needing the master plan out there for a long time, and maybe this would be this will get us started to that master plan of what what do we look like when we grow up, basically. Right. You know. So thank you. And, and also uh, going back to the grant that we uh, did not receive, we are already talking about how to enhance our project or proposal and pursue it again this following fiscal year. I, I appreciate it. I think that's wonderful news, frankly. Thank you, Mr. Sugg. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Commissioner Harvey said 
the, in, the entire port area. For clarity, are we talking about the 10 acres that the port authority owns or the whole port area? I don't have that answer. I can, I, I can help with that, Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Yeah. Sullivan's new and, and he's done yeoman's work on this. We're looking at the 10 acres right now, but we're looking at how we can encompass and, and, and expand that for the businesses that we currently have in the area. We want to be able to put a, a facility together that would, would make them more vibrant. We know for a fact that one of our businesses out there are operating at a, uh, at a deficit right now because they can't get enough materials in and out right now. And so uh, what we're trying to do is enhance both the rail and the water system to be able to, to assist those folks. Is that very Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Besides the rail spur, what's the what's uh, keeping them from being able to, uh, they're, they're expansion, to expansion, and the ability to run an additional shift and bring more folks in, and uh, the ability to get more steel in and out. So if there was a way that we could get more steel in and out, and if, even if it's on the uh, on the river, it will be a it'd be, a, be a benefit to them. And they are they are one of our uh, 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 I hate to say this, but larger tax folks that we really. Uh, want to make sure we assist them in any way we can uh, to maintain that function that business there. So uh, we're just, this is a project that has kind of grown a little bit from when we all took the tour out there uh, to having, uh, uh, frankly, being talked about in D.C. as well as in the Jacksonville Army Corps of Engineers Office, I think uh, uh, is something we need to continue to pursue. We've got really no dollars in, in, into the game yet, any skin into the game. This is an opportunity that's being brought to us and and so the opportunity to get a resolution from the board in a couple of weeks to go back out would, would certainly assist us in that process. Mr. Chairman, I can't see why we wouldn't support that. So, I mean, do you want us to make a motion today that we're... Uh, just support? by consensus, we'll bring it back in two weeks. And I believe you're, uh, I believe Mr. Gaviton will be here to present it or, or, yeah, or request it himself, so we'll be good. Thank you. All right, without Mr. exception Thank you. from a commissioner, we'll do that by consensus. Um, Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Is there any more general discussion on the report today? Um, at this time, I'm going to adjourn the Port Authority workshop and reconvene the Board of County Commissioners workshop and move on to item 4A, uh, General Services Administration, the CARES Act update. I don't think he's hopping. I don't think hopping's the right word. He himself hobbling, hobbling, hobbling maybe, but not hopping. I think y'all need to try to get a little closer to the microphone. I'm seeing Jacob wave, a wave every now and then. And Jacob, Mr. Suggs is hot. His microphone is real. I'm freezing my butt off of it. <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh, you took it as a compliment. <laughs> Easy. Are you ready for me, Chairman? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm going to update you just briefly where we are on the businesses and nonprofit grant program. And then our other part of our CARES team is going to update you on the individual assistance program. So as of close of business yesterday, we had 210 eligible businesses who had applied for the grant program and 43 nonprofits who applied. 100% of those had been reached out to and furnished the grant agreement to return to us, and 171 have already been sent to finance to process those checks. So just a brief update on where we are with businesses and nonprofits, and then Jim and Sam are going to bring you up to date with where we are on the individual assistance program. Okay. Hello again. Um, just going to brief you on... Uh, What's uh, going on in terms of uh, establishing uh, the uh, individual assistance program with CARES, uh, as the commission requested us to do? Um, we have been in discussions with the United Way of St. John's County, which also services uh, Putnam County to uh, actually administer the program for us. Uh, they have the experience and uh, the staff to do so. Uh, we are also in the final negotiations with uh, Neighborly Software, which is an application many of our fellow counties in uh, the state are using to uh, facilitate the application uh, process for our citizens. Uh, and uh, one of the advantages of this program over what we've been using so far is that with Neighborly, if you don't have all your documentation in place in the online application, you cannot submit. So it, you will know before you hit send, you will know that you need more inform information submitted. So it helps our citizens get a complete application the first time around instead of going back and forth and delaying payments to our citizens. Um, we've also talked with the uh, 
finance department regarding how we would uh, process uh, the materials and uh, create payments, uh, create payments to, uh, because we cannot give, just give the check to a citizen. We have to give the check to the different uh, agencies to the owe, like say the utility company, the rental agency, the mortgage company. Uh, we have been in talks with the finance department and uh, configured a process to where when we submit uh, uh, information to them, it would be broken down by uh, payee, like ABC Mortgage Company, and then underneath would be all our citizens' recipients, you know, John Doe, Jane Doe, uh, and how much they owe, so that way the finance department doesn't have to cut out 500 checks, they just have to cut out one, mm -hmm. and we take care of all our citizens. And uh, that is basically what we're looking at uh, doing. Uh, like I said, we're in the final negotiations with our uh, software company. I uh, just got some information over the last hour. Uh, we're going to have to fine-tune the agreement. Uh, hopefully that we'll be able to put some ink tomorrow, maybe Thursday, uh, which means at that time we can start the implementation process and then configuring our setup. I, I, I'd like to say Monday, knock on wood. So uh, that's kind of where we stand at this time. Uh, I probably forgot something. Jim. Sam, before uh, before you leave the podium, if I may, um, you had mentioned to me the other day about the individual assistance program that if this board had intentions of changing that amount of money that we do it now because what we in unintentionally did in the uh, business program was triple the amount of work that the staff had to do by going back a third time to allow them to have more money. So if um, if everybody thinks it would be appropriate at this time, I think we need to have that discussion at this time and say, are we going to keep it at the, the individual program at the current 2000? Do we have any interest in raising it, say, to 2500 or 3000 But if we do, we need to do it now and keep it there and have the same rules that we have in place at the, at the current time, which is first come, first serve. When the money's gone, it's over. So, but at this point, I think that it would actually maybe behoove us to pick an amount that may be a little higher than what it is right now because on the individual assistance program, it's not going to the individual, it's my understanding, it's going to the landlord or to the power company or to the, the, the affected area. So with that being said, they're going to have to justify and prove that they had these COVID-related expenses and they're going to be paid directly to the the, the, the uh, people they owe the money to instead of to the people, as, if that's my understanding. So, uh, there, is, there, there is a caveat where we would have to pay the individual directly, that is if it's a publicly owned company, uh, utility, or if it's a, a, a back payment of something that they've already paid and that's deemed okay. eligible. Okay, that's fine. I, yeah, that's, that's okay, but mo the, for the biggest part, it's going to be the people can't take three, 2000 or 3000 or whatever the board sets today, they can't take that money and then just change houses because and not pay it to the people of the renter. We're going to make sure that's not a, an available option, correct, if I understood when you were correct. explaining it. Okay. So if we'll stay on that subject for now, and then we'll get to you, you Jim, if that's okay. And, and uh, Commissioner Rawls, I believe you were next. So <clears throat> you, you mentioned um, back pay reimbursement. If somebody um, was laid off in March, um, was able to make their rent or mortgage payment, whatever, in April, May, June, um, and they've now hit a brick wall, they apply for this. Are, in my understanding correctly, are able to recoup the money that they did pay back then uh, if they can show that they were able to pay their rent or their, their mortgage. Is that correct? Yes, if they could show that, for example, you said they were laid off in March when this all right. started. As long as after March 1st, yes, they would be. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Commissioner Turner. It, um, I, you know, from what the update we just got, we're at about $5.3 million expended on nonprofit and for-profit businesses, which is um, nowhere near what we have. Um, so if there's a greater need, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting that number from, you said 210 businesses and 43 nonprofits? Yeah, and then, so, and I'm pushing that $10,000 $10, per business. Um, 
So uh, we, we, we've got the, the extra money. Our goal is to get rid of the, the, as much money before December 31st as possible. Uh, so I, I would um, think that we would probably be in the public's best interest to increase the, um, the maximum amount, um, maybe up to $5,000 per person. I think that's a little stiff, but uh, because you may be cutting out some people that actually need it. If it's too high, it'll, it'll come back down to here, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're what negotiating. Are we, are we on Pawn Stars today? <laughs> yeah, right. How'd you do, pronounce that one correctly? <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, what is it? Oh, you're next? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Commissioner Harvey. Um, Julianne, we set a line item budget on the individual assistance. So are we going to increase that line item budget or are we just going to increase the amount so, uh, given so, to? Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I think you understand the question. Yes, sir, I do. So if you'll remember when we did that, that spend plan, what we did was roll up those individual, those assistance programs that are for our community. So basically we have a, a, a lump sum of $8.5 million in the business, nonprofit, and individual assistance program. Then we earmarked $3 million for businesses, $3 million for nonprofits, and two point five for individual assistance. Um, as you can see from my numbers right now, your nonprofits are not trending where your businesses are. So remember what we're going to provide to the state or what we're attempting to provide to the state is a narrative that says total assistance to the community is 8.5. So if you were to morph those as we go forward, um, now remember my numbers did not include your businesses who are in a missing documents category and we are submitting those every single day. So those numbers are going to increase drastically, especially for businesses, not so much nonprofits. We don't have a ton of them. Um, but, but so the, that it's a it's a moving target every single day. But it's my understanding that we're free by the spending plan that we submitted to the state to change the amounts of each individual program if we have within a, that lump sum. Within right. the, within the eight proposing. and a half million dollars, and That's so correct. now the state you know, hasn't given us formal approval on even our our state plan. Now once they do, they may say, "I, I want individual. I want an earmark." Um, but at this point, we've only given them lump sum dollars. Okay, my well, second, what, what excuse that? me, I didn't thought you were done. No, my so second question is this. Uh, the conversation a second ago was people who were behind on their rent and the mortgage, and uh, I think we had a good discussion on that yesterday. So thank you all very much for that opportunity. But it could be that a person gets the money and doesn't have past due rent, past due mortgage, past due light bill, and they do receive a check from the county. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that what I'm understanding? Right. That was uh, along the lines of the example <clears throat> Commissioner Rawls okay. just went through. So essentially, um, if, uh, if an individual can prove that they had a hardship due to COVID, I was laid off in March, right. but I continued to make my rent payment. I just didn't buy my kids' school shoes. Right, right, um, right. Then there is a provision by which we can go back and reimburse them if we've proven the financial hardship due to COVID. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So I guess the uh, what I'm looking for today on behalf of uh, Sam hemming me up yet the other day is that um, we need to decide what the top tier of this is going to be once and for all and not change it again. Because all, every time we change it, while it's a good thing to change it, we're doubling the work each time for staff. And uh, I know that the commissioners have been back there, but it seems to me like um, every time I go back there, they got four people hemmed up in a room that are full-time uh, working on these programs, four yeah. staff members. And uh, we took some from public works, we took some from purchasing, we took some, and, and that's not including the time that the individuals in front of us spend on it also. So four full-time workers. So I'm not interested in doubling or tripling the load on, on the uh, individuals. I'd like to see us make a decision today and then stick by it, whatever that decision is. Um, before I turn the floor over to Commissioner Pickens, I just had one more question. If we set it at three or four or even five, like Commissioner Rawls suggested on his pawn star negotiating, um, would... And, and kept it there, would the top tier of that float like we talked about in the businesses? So if they couldn't prove COVID uh, hardships to that 5,000 level, they could still come in at 2,000 or 2,600 or whatever. We could do that. Okay. 
All right, that's the question I had, Commissioner Pickens. Yeah, that was one of the questions I had to answer that. When do you think you'll have approval of the spending plan? Do you have any idea? Uh, we had our state assigned grant liaison the first meeting yesterday and have another meeting with him on Thursday. Um, we're tweaking some of the language. He's got some great advice, so he's helping us through that process. So, um, And we essentially knew that we had something coming to the workshop today that may adjust our spend plan, and so hopefully we're going to be able to submit it and get the state to give us something after Thursday. I'm going to ask this, but in, in the people, the businesses that you've had contact with, individuals and nonprofits, do they understand that they have to prove that they had these COVID-related expenses? It's not, I'm just signing up to get me some free cash. We've had both scenarios. Um, we've had some businesses who have come in and said, I can't prove that much in COVID-related expenditures. And obviously, um, no county staff is providing advice or consultation to our business community. We've had some just sign the sheet and want the max amount of money. Um, we ask them if they're, if they're concerned that they reach out to their accountant and or legal counsel to discuss the agreement. Um, the, the agreement is eight pages, so if they take the time to read it, then they would clearly see the nexus and the eligible reimbursable expenses. Now, that's for your nonprofits and your businesses. Um, it's a different scenario for your individual assistance. There, so, I'm you. afraid there's going to become a day of reckoning. I just don't, I'm concerned. Uh, hopefully not, but I'm concerned. But you know, Mr. Chairman, that is, that's up to them. The onus is on them to provide. And I they, understand, but the onus funny. is on us because if, yeah, they don't, if they decide not to pay and they don't have the money to repay us because they've spent it, then it's going to be up to the county to stroke a check and go after them, not the state. As far as I'm understanding, that is the rule that we That's only correct. agree that, that we sign. So if or when the audit comes, the audit comes to the county. And if or when the audit comes, then the county attempts to come to the business. Um, and But ultimately, the county is the subrecipient. So the, it would be the county's audit to, to furnish the records. I just think it would be, I think that if we try to do the right thing and someone does the wrong thing, I don't know how much we can protect ourselves from that. I really don't. I mean, I, unless we just say, give me all your bills and let me see your financials, and we're not asking for all that. So. Well, unfortunately, in the world that we live in today, um, if we're going to hand out $8 million in, in money and half of it decides that they're not going to pay back and they're a bunch of little deals, you know, even a bunch of small deals added up or they don't have the money to give back, the county's going to be on the line for that $4 million, but we knew that going in. Yeah, we did. You know, but you talk about a, a bust your bank account moment, that will be it. That'll be it. Um, so hopefully we're, we're being as careful as we can as we go through this. Uh, Commissioner Rawls. <clears throat> so some of the, the, the eligible expenses start March. Do they cut off or, 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 or yeah, expenses? They, do they cut off December 30th? Yes, or sir. is it? Okay, so um, it, our arbitrary deadline. Do what? Oh no, you're good. So you're you're, you're having a nine month conversation to give you a little bit of ease. If, if somebody had a thousand dollars a month in obligations, either for uh, insurance, um, uh, mortgages, rent, electricity, um, you know, on average, the, the I think the, the least you're going to spend the city limits is around two hundred bucks a month for water and sewer and trash collection. So. I don't think it's going to be hard for businesses to be able to hit that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable knowing that they're going to be honest about it. But unless they're running a business out of their, their backyard, they're going to have overhead. Right. <clears throat> and it didn't stop coming with COVID. Um, is there an opportunity, if, we have the, if, we're, if we're coming up into, as far as the plan goes, to put some language in there that says that if we're coming up, say, the middle of or the end of November, and we know that the, the cutoff date is December, and you have larger businesses out there that have 20 or 30 or 40 employees and they, you know, huge overhead, that they might be able to come back for a second bite at the apple if we know that we're going to have the money left over. Or so, profits. Commissioner, I'm, I'm, the answer is yes. However, staff recommendation is going to be that you are very, very cautious about that road for a number of reasons. One, it does start us all back over at ground zero, trying to get everything done. 
our office, the clerk's office, the whole nine yards. The other is our consultant um, feels very strongly that we're kind of at the max um, tolerable amount that's going to be seen as community aid. And anything above that is really going to get into a scenario where you would, um, the, the prudent or responsible thing to do at that point would be to um, mandate that the entity account for every dollar spent, just like we're making our constitutional offices and our municipal partners. So it, it becomes a situation that if you started in November and you said, okay, X percent of these can now get five more thousand dollars, then we need to account for $15,000 for that whatever percent you've allocated. And we would have to then get the consultant to validate that all 15 grand of that is eligible expenditures. And just frankly, the logistics of that um, concern me, just okay. staff recommendation. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of the um, nonprofits that we've discussed a couple that were larger. So we've <clears> only one had this morning. But yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Um, we've only had about four of them reach out to us and inquire about the process if they'd like to do more than the 10 grand. Because remember, the nonprofits are under a little bit right. different caveat for CARES. So they have to prove that their program they're providing is a response to COVID and how COVID created the community crisis. So if, I'm, if I've been providing food for 10 years for the community, I can't very well argue that COVID decided that our community needed food. Follow that right. train of thought, if you will. So we've only had about four inquire, and to date I've had none submit um, an application or an, a, a, you know, a proposal to bring back to the board for over and above that 10. Um, so just to put your mind at ease as far as what your need is out there. Okay, so if I could try to get us focused again on what the actual what our actual task is at the moment, which is try to find out are we going to set a higher than two thousand dollar limit on the individual assistance program, knowing that they that those that the the uh, people that are uh, that are going to apply for it absolutely have to prove it. It's not like the business program to where they can just attest or whatever. They've got to prove that this works. So, uh, Commissioner Harvey. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think 2,500. I, I think I'd like to put as many people in the pool as we possibly can, I think because it's first come, first serve. Commissioner Rawls, I really respect the 5,000, don't get me wrong, but, you know, I think we're going into the holidays very soon. And I think this money is going to be used very fast. So I think $2,500, $3,000, I'm very comfortable with that number. Would you make that a motion? $2,500 or $3,000? Well, I'll tell you, you what. You're closer to your mark, Jeff. I'll tell you what. I'll, I will make a motion that we raise it to, from $2,000 to $3,000. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a motion by Commissioner Harvey and a second by Commissioner Rawls that we raise the individual assistance program to a $3,000 maximum from 2000 Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, now, even though, yes, just if you would just say it, even though we don't usually vote in workshop <clears throat> when it comes to the CARES Act, we don't have time to go two more weeks for another another meeting to uh, okay this type of information commissioner Rawls. sam did i understand you correctly this will be on the street monday you, you hope you that, that that is my hope uh like i said we still have a couple of fine tuning to do with legal uh, regarding the uh contract with the uh software company right. uh we passed the united way contract this morning on consent so it's a uh, couple little intangibles once we got those ironed out then we just need them to uh, configure our system to go online. They told us uh, when we talked to them uh, about 10 days ago that it would take about 48 hours, two business days. So Monday is a uh, so will, will there be a link on our website just like the other ones they can all, click on we it will advertise it okay. through all our social media in any way possible and possibly call the press, uh, press release and all that. I just had a lot of people ask me when, mm -hmm. when it's going to start, and I told just to be patient, and I didn't know how if we are going to send them to United Way, or if we could just tell them to go to our link, and then it... Uh, we, we will have a link on our website to the uh, proper website, so they should be able to just go to our Putnam County website. Okay. And Mr. Jim, did you have something you wanted to add today, sir? I did not, Mr. Chair. Okay, Mr. Thanks. Chairman, if I could, Mr. Sullivan and team, if, the, if there is any delay in getting that out and up and running by Monday, let's please notify the commissioners as soon as we know that. Thank you. Thank you all, and that was all the information you needed today, wasn't it, guys <coughs> and gals? Excuse me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, with that, we're going to move on to 
the next item on the list and um, human resources items, three of them. Um, Angela, I'm assuming that's going to be you. Um, do you want to take these one at the time, or can we just bunch them all into one unless the commission? Okay. I think Barbara's is a little different. So we have sick leave termination, and uh, come on up, Barbara. Miss Shepard, excuse me. <laughs> okay, uh, if you want to just kind of take them all in that. And then uh, if it gets too uh, ominous, we'll back it up and, and go into sections if, uh, um, if the commissioners have a lot of problems. I read all the way through this, and it was pretty, pretty calm changes to me, and they were all recommended. You wrote the changes. You and, your, and Barbara and staff wrote them, right? The recommended and changes. And also legal as well. They had some advisement over okay. what's taken and out. Okay. You're going to have to get close to the microphone or speak louder. I see Jacob back there having a fit. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Yes, thank you. So, okay. Mr. Uh, Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Harvey. I think everybody's had a chance to read it. I don't know. Do you want to go through every page or or just find out what commissioners? I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy I, to I would kind of recommend, if you don't mind, changes, that, uh, so. that we just go commissioner by commissioner and say, do you have any comments or questions on a certain page over the the different ones and just explain that because I think most of it is self-explanatory and seems to me like it's more than okay, uh, the recommended changes. So um, does any commissioners have any comments they'd like to make on recommended changes? Um, I don't. Do you, I'd, I'd just like to make the comment that I'm glad that this is getting looked at <laughs> after Thank so you. many years that, you know, it probably needed to be looked at. So I appreciate it and it's it very self-explanatory. I appreciate the conversation we had after our meeting today and and I did read it all this afternoon. So we appreciate your hard work. We truly do. But uh, unless there's some particular point you want to bring up or whatever, it sounds to me like by consensus, we're ready to just move it forward to the consent agenda on the next meeting. Yep. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Sounds good by me. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. All right. I do want to hear Barbara say something well, into we the do, microphone. We do have one though, thing. Yeah, have one thing <laughs> yes. <laughs> So on the excess workman's comp, we do have um, a plan that you guys would need to pick, help us choose right, from. We have a staff recommendation. I'm just going to have Barbara speak on this for a second. Yeah, I'm sorry. You brought, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, that, that was only discussed in the yeah, two policies. Yeah, you betcha. You're there. It needs to be discussed. Our current carrier, we've had a $600,000 retention for mm -hmm. quite a while, and now they're not offering that any longer. They offered us several other options, and we wanted to bring it to the board to look at. Um, the self-insured retention is basically a deductible. We've been self-insured since 1989, and over the years, it's crept up. Um, fire and police are always the hot topic, so that's part of the reason Midwest is trying to get out of that arena, so they bumped us up to a flat million. The other two companies, well, the other company offered us two options. Safety National with an $850,000 retention. And the other option is a million dollars on fire police claims and 700,000 for all other employees. You know, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know where our next excess workers comp claim will be. It could be fire police, <coughs> it could be a staff assistant in a vehicle wreck. But we wanted to present this guys to you to, to look at and get your thoughts on it. Um, my first question was, is this aggregate or, or uh, per case? It's per case. Okay, so we're going to retain the first 850000 on option two, and the, the, the first option is just not an option at all. I mean, um, because for $20-something thousand dollars, we get 150000 per per case. That's just, that's a no-brainer. Um, and the uh, the last one... Most of our uh, serious claims are probably from fire and police, I would think. That's For why the they wanted part, us to retain the first million dollars of each one of those cases. So I've had, I have had a few others, but the majority are fire and police. And well, I think we need we to take the out. one with the very least risk to the county. Uh, we're spending uh, the public dollars here. And with that being said, I think, um, I think we need to look at option two is what I think because it's the less retained uh, out of the three and it's only, um, 
what, $21,000 more than option one that we retain a full million instead of 850,000. Seems to me like um, Midwest is, uh, is just asking us to go ahead and seek someone else and leave, it looks yeah, to me they're like. they're wanting to, to pull out of that right. business. Commissioner actually. Harvey, you were next, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I had option three, but Barbara and I talked about some things that possibly could be done in the risk management field to look at some of those, couple of those high things that we got. But option two is, is very good for the county also, so I could support option two very well. So, Commissioner Rawls. Well, you, um, <clears throat> Commissioner Harvey started to allude to it. Is there anything that we can put into place that would um, decrease uh, the premium? In other words, in, in, and I'm, I'm sorry if this sounds uh, not, not immature, but in, in my business, you know, we have a, a drug-free workplace program and a safety policy that's published. If we have um, quarterly audits and, and inspections by our insurance company, it brings our rate down by about 20-plus percent. We are self-insured, so we don't get that drug-free workplace credit. Right. Um, but, I mean, is there anything we can put into place that would um, help, help out with, with this? Because I understand that, you know, if we're, if we're going to eat the first $850,000, um, if, if we have something in place that keeps us from having, having claims, it also reduces their risk of having to reinsure as well. Uh -huh. So My... <clears throat> My question, I guess, would be, and because you're absolutely correct on the workers' comp uh, employer side of it, that you're absolutely correct. The There is a setup that I know is available. that may not make it available to us, but it is available where the actual SIR is a lower rate, and then you have an aggregate tier in between what they, what they take over as reinsurance and the tier that you retain full. And it's a the uh, the aggregate layer actually allows the uh, let's say you had an aggregate layer of a half a million or a million dollars, you would they would take a, a retention of five hundred thousand and then an aggregate layer. So you would take the next whatever that aggregate is five hundred to a million five hundred thousand to a million dollars and spread it across all claims. So until you reached your $500 retention, plus you had your, your aggregate, which is in, all of them added up in between until you reached that aggregate. You retained that first money, but it made, the, it made the reinsurance quite a bit less expensive by accepting that aggregate layer in between, and it also allowed you to have a less retention layer underneath. So has anybody said anything that they, about that they might be willing to look at a plan like that for us? Well, the... Um Arthur J. Gallagher, they actually submit ours to three different companies. One of them wouldn't even look at it because we have fire and police. You know, they're just viewed as a high risk, and some companies just don't want to go there. And I think if we were a different type of business, it would be a lot easier for us to do that. At what, <laughs> at what point do we have to make this decision? Is it like everything else, like we get day after tomorrow? I need to get my renewal ordered, yes. Okay, when is the current policy run run out? Fifteenth. The fifteenth of November? October. October. Two days? Two days. Okay, I would hmm. Mr. Chairman, in in response to that, uh, when we got the information it was already at the uh, the eleventh hour. We actually I had staff reach out to our uh, our provider and ask them if we could at least get an extension till after today's meeting so we could at least have some conversation. I'm not wanting to chastise anyone at all. That's not my intent here, but hopefully next year we can maybe check into a reinsurance broker and it do might it. be something that we should consider bidding out next year. That's now, what I'm saying. Get a broker we and won't get they won't bid to us, Barbara. Folks, but we'll get a few. They won't bid to us. If if you'll reach out to a reinsurance broker, um, I know several. Uh, maybe between now and next year and reach out to a broker. They can actually go to, to companies all over the country instead of us just dealing with people that want to deal direct. The, I mean, there's companies that broker reinsurance, and that's all that they do. Um, and so I know that we don't have time to do it this year. I know that reinsurance comes in at the last hour. They do that like electrical contractors don't want to bid until the last hour before a bid. You know, it's just part of the world and the way it is. And so at that point, 
you know, I'm willing to move forward today to keep to keep this moving or whatever, but next year we sure need to get a broker to bid this out for us because there could be some substantial changes and program differences between we have now like the the uh, half a million, X a million, or whatever the... An early start also, like, you know, maybe even before budget time. Just start oh, early. Right, yeah, and, and that's what you'd need to do. You'd need to reach out to your brokers if this thing... Uh, is in October, you'd probably need to reach out to them in maybe July because it's going to take a while for them to come up with the different programs and contact the different brokers and, and see what's available out there that they bid to a county. I know we've got to be able to find something better than this if we went through that type of deal. So anyhow, Commissioner Harvey. And, and along those lines, uh, Commissioner Rawls, risk management, an active risk management, and Barbara and I have discussed this for many years. Um, could really save us a lot. And we could look at claims that we've had and how could we avoid some of those with policies and procedures. Might help out very much so. so. But you also have the problem of the statute of the, of the police and the fire. The heart-lung bill. The heart-lung bill, which is forced upon us at that my point. My three highest claims since 2014, one's a vehicle accident and the other two are heart right. claims. Right, so that's, a, that's the unknown. And we didn't even choose that. That was given to us by, yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Rawls. <clears throat> so I think you, you just covered part of what my question. I'd written down employee training and incentives. If, if we had a, um, you know, if, if we can get the employees in and, and get them to understand that they're stakeholders, um, maybe come up with a way that we could incentivize them by uh, some of the cost savings if, if they work smart, work safe mm -hmm. um, throughout the year, and then there's a, a, a savings in the year, then we I'm sure it out. I know the, 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 the city still do that when you were there. When I was at the city, they had they had something like that. And it, it, at Thanksgiving time, they would come up and give everybody like fifty or seventy-five dollar bonus. And yeah, we just we just had an event to promote um, uh, safety. If anybody did not have an at fault accident um, during the year, they would get an additional day off of work. That was the incentive. It wasn't a, a monetary, but it was a. Hey, it was a day off of work. Day off with pay is good. <laughs> Some of the monetary. departments, sanitation it, and public works, they would have little ceremonies. It might be a breakfast or maybe like a luncheon and various things. But well, you know, again, I, that's not ongoing all the time. Well, I appreciate this conversation. It's not a task of what we're trying to get accomplished today, but it's a very good, very good conversation. Um, so if we could uh, possibly uh, stay on task, I think we're going to, have to do another motion at a workshop as much as I dislike that because it's due in two days. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I move that we adopt option two for with Safety National with 850,000 self-insured retention, premium of 159,857. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Uh, motion by Commissioner Harvey, second by Commissioner Pickens. Um, the, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I just have a motion carries unanimously. Um, just for anybody that wants to know, a barber and our team meets every month in a safety meeting, and that's exactly what they go over, things like we're talking about here today and how they can do better and try to prevent accidents and, and things like that. But I'm sure that any, um, any comments or suggestions that any of us had, they could either write to Barbara or attend one of her safety meetings or whatever, and because... And, Nothing's ever as good as what it could be That's if you right. had more people looking at it. So it starts at well, the top. What, what I'm talking about is actually a little beyond that, um, and it would not just include workman's comp, but also our, our health insurance, because the more that we can get the employees to realize that they are true, honest-to-God stakeholders. Right. But if, if we realize the savings and they don't realize anything out of it, then there's no benefit for them. Why? Why should they go to the doc in the box and sit in the emergency room? Yeah, I agree. So, but like I said, that's a, a, a good, good. Uh, I think we should put that on a discussion for a future workshop for us to be able to incentivize our employees. And I don't disagree with that at all. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> and Thank you, Wells, ladies. We are actually going to look at a wellness program for next year, so we can certainly look at the two paired together. I think that's a wonderful idea. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you for coming today. Was that all you needed today? That's from all. Us? Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Barbara. And thank you, Angela. Okay, we're going to move down to item F on the agenda, which is the uh, continuing services contract for CEI on Barden Bridge. I'll tell you what, if we don't get that bridge bit out before long, the troll underneath is going to die. 
hate to pour salt in one, but we could have done quicker on like design build at this yeah, point. Bridge is out. It's out for bid now. Well, good afternoon. Uh, this is for the uh, um, the CEI services for Barton Bridge. Uh, I'm going to try to say Ed and Naya. Is that the proper? Yes, that's right. right. Yeah, that's right. right. That's yes. the first time I said I ever said it right, I think. Uh, like Ohio, we knew that Ed and I. Ed and I. <laughs> but as you know, uh, uh, since this is a Florida Department of Transportation project, uh, it does require that we have CEI on this uh, on this project. So uh, what we did is we got a hold of CHW. Uh, we actually talked with uh, the Florida Department of Transportation, and they were saying that uh, we asked them which contractors provide really good construction inspection. And they actually recommended CHW for this project. Uh, one, because I know it's a critical project, and uh, they, they they keep the, in in their opinion, it keeps the uh, the contractor on task. They will be there every day. You, you can look through the, the process we went through, but uh, we went through several re reiterations of their cost. They first came in at three hundred sixty-one thousand when we when we did this, uh, and then. Uh, once we got with FDOT and did some other uh, negotiations with them, they came down to 336, which is roughly 11.4% of the estimated construction cost, which for, for bridges, it ranges between 10% and 15%. And typically, this is a, believe it or not, believe it or not $3 million is a pretty small dollar threshold for a, uh, for a bridge. So, uh, and they tend to run on the 15% higher or 15% cost for this smaller dollar bridges but so I think we got a really good price at 11.4 percent for this um, so what we want to do is just if you guys want to have discussions on this but uh, if you guys approve well, we'll bring it back to the next uh, uh, consent agenda so that we can get it approved for before we because we need this before we award the bridge uh, construction contract Mr. Harvey thank you Mr. Chairman so the bottom line here is we got 3.2 million dollars set aside for the bridge and uh, we're estimating 2.9 for the building of the bridge. Correct. Um, 336,000 for the CEI. Um, we're still under budget, correct? Is that what I'm understanding? No, uh, because that part of the design fees come out of that as well. Okay. Uh, basically, if we did the 336 and the, uh, the bridge came in at $2.9 million, we would still have to come up with uh, a little over four hundred thousand dollars out of the county's budget. Right. That's not, you know, that's not bad though, because you got somebody <coughs> paying ninety percent of the bill, and you're paying ten percent. I can, I like those numbers all day long. So, okay, thank you, Mr. Rawls. Um, the designs at one hundred percent. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, and it's. Uh, has, has anybody taken the opportunity to value engineer it? Not, not the value engineering, no. Will there be any at all, or is it we're just going to go with the straight design? It'll go with the straight design on this one. Okay. Um, what is the anticipated, um, if, if, if everything fell perfect, when would you see sticking a shovel in the ground? Well, we have a pre-bid meeting on Friday, uh, so that's happening in uh, I had to get asked with Julianne and figure out when the bids are due. I can't remember when the bids are due on this, but um, I could. I would hope for middle middle of December, but that's okay. And then uh, roughly in a year to complete the project. I believe it is. I think it's less than that. I think it's like two hundred seventy days. Okay. Shout out Julianne's coming. <laughs> what? <laughs> Julianne's coming. <laughs> oh. You done for now, Commissioner? Yeah. You know, there's nothing that boils my blood more than having to pay this. I know. I know. But this is an FDOT project, and they're paying the bill, so we have no choice. Right. We can either turn down the funding and let the bridge fall apart, or we can take the $3 million in funding that they allowed us to use as part of the Holloway grade, was it, is that the correct name? Holloway grade uh, project that they uh, let us at our request change over to this project and the project on 310. Um, do we like having to pay a little extra? No, sure don't. But the thing about it is that sure beats paying the three million. That's right. I'll <laughs> say the whole, the whole thing. Know, so the county's going to have to pay some money. I don't like it. I don't like it at all, but I don't know where we have an opportunity to have a different choice unless we want to fund the whole thing ourselves. Right. And even then, 
I don't know that we're going to get away without CSI services, especially for the even if the county builds it on their own. Um, I know we're not with DOT involved. No. Right. So, yeah, I'm this, good. This kind of sucks, but I and we got to figure out where we're going to get the money from when the time comes. But uh, Mike said he'd come over the river. Well, that's a definite. Actually, that's a definite possibility. possibility yeah. We have reserves over there that uh, that we've moved forward for the last couple of years that are true reserves. So that is an opportunity. This may be, instead of coming out of general reserves, this may be one of those opportunities to uh, bring some of that forward for just these kind of situations, um, un unforeseen situations that we may need to fund. And if I think we still have 800 or 800,000 or a million or more dollars in that reserve right now. And so in the, uh, the public works reserve for just these kind of situations. So yes, you're absolutely, I know you were kind of being just jestful about it, but I think really that for true, I think that it would be a good case to use that money. Any idea how um, 310's looking? I think they're in design oh, now, aren't they? Have you got 310 in design now? So I haven't, I haven't checked yeah, on that you, one. You do. I think, I think any, do. Any cost estimates? That you I don't think we're near far enough along recently. yet. I don't even think they've come to the uh, to the opinion yet if they're going to just repair the existing crutch vents or are they going to uh, try to replace the bridge or do different uh, things. I think that's what they're no, trying we went to with, uh, yeah, we went trying with option to, one, which was, right. uh, was yeah. the cheapest option, I remember right. now. But, but they I, haven't really I think that was crutch bent repair, if I'm not mistaken. Just a minimal do we need right. to Right. Minimal we could do to bring it up and yep. make it passable yep. again. Yep. Right. Okay, Miss Young, did you have something you wanted to say or did you uh question. Um, the, the construction You're gonna have to get to the microphone, I'm sorry. Pull it down. Jacob will throw something at me. Just answering the board's question. The the con the the bid for construction of the Barden Bridge is set to come for award at the November 10th BOCC meeting. So it's out now. Oh, it's out. Right. Yeah. yeah. The construction bid is out. The item before you is the CEI related right. to. So okay. So did you, you have something, yeah. sir? So if we start in, um, in December, what kind of um, burden will the, the uh, folks that live out there have to endure? It, it, we're going to go to one lane, correct? If they bid it for our per our design, we're, they're supposed to build one lane beside the existing bridge, then close the, the existing bridge and use stoplight on each side and have a full lane, full capacity, single lane bridge while they build the other half of that bridge. Now that was what was directed by the board, and that's what I hope happened. So that is exactly what should we start doing. at some point, maybe a month ahead of construction, notifying the residents. Oh yeah, so they don't have this just popped on them. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be a very good idea and yeah, hope, hopefully hopefully uh, by the end of this school year when it's about time they don't need them anymore, they'll be able to cross the bridge with buses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, well, it's a pretty captive neighborhood out there, so one sign <laughs> pretty you, much all handles. You, all you need to do is put a put a sign on the door of Bud's Grocery of what we're fixing to do <laughs> and, and everybody on the other side of that bridge will know it within a day or two. So uh, put a mask on it because Yeah, that's it. right. I mean, that's where you post barden notices on at uh, Kevin's place. So the bulletin board out there. <laughs> uh, amen. So uh, anyhow, do you need anything else from us today? Yeah. No, if, uh, if this is good to go, then we'll do is we'll uh, we'll get we'll finalize that and we'll bring the contract forward for the next uh yeah, I don't see where we have a choice, Mike. Thank you for bringing it to us today. I just don't see where we have a choice. As much as I don't like it, I just don't see we have a choice. So, Thanks, yeah, sir. you'll bring it back. We'll move in that direction. Uh, one last thing, Mike. I just want to say thank you for at least talking them down what you could on the services that they were going to perform. Okay, the... Uh, Next is item G, a uh, request for care <coughs> funding from the health department. Ms. Mary, I'm assuming that's why you're here with us today. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, didn't think that we would have an opportunity to come up for this kind of a request. We did put one in for some uh, physical equipment for our special needs shelters. But... Um, I get if you've read the documentation, mm -hmm. um, the state 
had given each health department a certain amount of funds to be able to run our test site and our community tracing. And some of you have had the pleasure of um, doing the county tracing or uh, contact tracing with us, and some of them are in the back, and we appreciate everyone's help for that because it's a team effort as we go forward. One of the things that we're facing is that the state, with very little notice, withdrew all the funds from us except minimal for some of our OPS positions to maintain. It did not include funding for our current staff that is running our test site. So I wanted to give you, if you will, um, I, I'm a very visual person, so I've given you some visuals to walk through with me, if you don't mind. So the first one is this graph, and it basically just walks through how much testing is done by the testing, the community testing site um, here in Putnam. Um, and it kind of gives an idea of the timeline from September to the 1st of September to the 29th of September. We've done at our own test site through that month over 2,365 tests. That number has not diminished as we've gone into October. And one of the things that is critically important, um, and then if you look at, I gave you this one as well. So um, this one, if you add up the totals, um, that just gives us a two-week timeline from the end of September through today. And there are, um, if you just add the numbers up it, and multiply it times two, it will give us a full month of tests that are done in Putnam County on behalf of Putnam County residents, and it's over 5,300 tests that are done each month. We do about 50% of them at our test site at no cost. The other ones are done either at hospitals, are done at um, outside of county, some of them are done at, um, at some of our uh, long-term care facilities, some of them are done at other places. Um, I think one of the important things that we come to you is that um, without the funding to maintain our test site, um, we're not going to be able to sustain it. And I think we're one of the things that we're looking at is coming into the second wave as we go through the end of this time period through December. So didn't think that would ever have to be in front of you up for this, but it is um, one of those things that we come as partners to you. We have put in a lot of effort for this pandemic, and not any of us, I think, saw this coming to us at this point in our lives. Um, but with the funding that was withdrawn from the state, and it wasn't withdrawn just from Putnam, it was withdrawn from every county in the state of Florida. So some of us have been fortunate enough um, to be able to have been able to hire nurses and LPNs to be able to help us at some of our sites and some of our facilities. Uh, Putnam. It's very difficult to hire a nurse when most of the nurses across the state uh, and other states are being contracted out. We have worked really closely with the college and they were able to get us two individuals that were willing to come work for us um, at, a, at our LPN price. And then I finally reached out through our partners at our um, policy group have some help and two nurses have volunteered there. Putnam County raised nurses um, that were reached out through by um, Mayor Hill who are willing to work with us at our um, Department of Health salary as opposed to going with a contract price. So this um, is really what we're trying to do is try to keep our site open. What we've done by keeping our site open is that we're able to return individuals. One of the blessings that we have is that we're able to do the test test results are able to come back within 24 to 36 hours, 24 hours pretty much. We can sometimes find out the next day and are able to send children back to school. We are able to send parents back to work and we're able to then stop the spread of the disease because um, we're able to triage really quickly um, those individuals that come to test with us. So if I'm understanding, Mary, that, um, that you're funded up till now, but you're wanting to keep your test sites open for the future. And, and that at what amount of money? I couldn't really find it in there. I did. It's in the top of that uh, request. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's right now we're requesting um, a total of $56,000. 
Oh, and that be able to keep the test site open. That does not count the staff that I will keep on our own to keep it running. 52. Well. 52. I'm sorry, so. I can't yeah. see my eyeballs. You negotiate like I, I did. eye surgery, so you know, I'll blame it on that. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually calculating back there, and we probably the cut right ourselves number, short a little 52. bit. 52. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, if we can bring the individuals that will need to sustain us. But at the same time, I need to let you know that so, while you all have been able to bring individuals back to, um, to work, my staff that I probably need to be putting back into my clinic are still running the test site, which we're certainly willing to continue to do. But uh, we anticipate a shortfall for those individuals that we need to bring on board to continue to maintain the test site. And the 52,000 would keep your test centers open for how long? Through December, sir. Yep. Through December, okay. And the 52,000 would be what would qualify as a CARES expenditure uh, from Wood O'Brien? <clears throat> Mayor, did you say through the end of uh, December or to? I beg your pardon. How long will it keep you going through December or to December? Both through the, uh, well, we had some conversations back and forth of when the CARES funding would have to have all the paperwork in. So we did about 13 weeks worth, which should get us almost to the end of December. December. We wouldn't count the last week, which are holidays, which I don't, I would imagine that that would be tough for us to keep it open for anybody. Okay, you, Ms. Young, could you, uh, what do you think about that? Yes, sir. Based on the synopsis that we know um, today, we do believe they would be eligible expenses, uh, eligible for reimbursement only. So essentially, um, <coughs> if they would incur the expenses, we would validate that they are in line with what the program details are, and then we would reimburse them just like we are in municipalities and constitutional offices. Okay, yeah, I'm Miss Mary again. <laughs> Miss Mary at the we're present. Hi, at, so we're good. <laughs> At the present time, um, where all are where all are tests available that are free of charge? Are there any free of charge tests other than at your location that you're aware of? So everybody would have to pay to have a test done at the doctor if we don't continue the test sites. Yes, sir. And you know, I mean, oh, don't get me started. Um, but you know that our our county is considered to be one of the poorest in our in our area. Um, we have looked at other alternatives. We talked to Ms. Young to see if there was a way of maybe doing a contract out there. Um, we did reach out to our sister county in Alachua. They do have, um, they, hope they do bill for, it, for it coming in and doing a mission, let's say, like we used to do missions in Crescent City and Interlochen and doing those missions. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of the synopsis of what the state has been able to support Putnam um, through our requests. Um, but they would they charge $85 a test. Um, they have to use an outside laboratory. The timeline for that laboratory um, is not as fast as the state laboratory. So one of the things that we have been very fortunate because of our location is that we're able to do the tests. We actually drive the tests up to the state lab at the end of each day. There's actually a courier that comes and picks them up midday as well. So we are actually able sometimes to see results that evening. And some of us do work evenings and see the results. And some of us are the next day. So we are able to really quickly uh, pull students that need to be pulled out of school. We are trying to stop the spread. If you've heard around us, you've seen how many cancellations there have been for ball games, how many cancellations of schools. We have been very fortunate because of our partnership and working really closely with the school district and working really closely with each of you is to really make sure that we don't have that lag in information. And we're fortunate because we drive our tests up every day. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Rolls. Um, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't see a problem in uh, funding this. Do you think this is gonna be, because you, you, right now you've already expended money. You said none of us saw this coming, so everything you've spent to date is reimbursable. Um, oh, yes, sir. So, yes, so sir. You, yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. You, do, you, do you see any a need for any any more money um, <laughs> because December 31st isn't going to be the end of this um, uh, this virus for you guys. Um, you know, I'm going to be really grateful when 2020 is over. I'm sure the rest of you are going to be as well. Um, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, either we are going to go through our second wave and things are going to slow down. If you look at other countries across the world, they are starting their second wave now. We're praying for a vaccine to come out. That is gonna take some time. And yes, you're absolutely right that if we 
and start testing, I probably needed to have come up and said, hey, at some point, if I'm gonna show you to the second chart, our influenza-like illnesses, if you look on the back of that chart, our influenza-like illnesses Ms. are Ms. Mary, while, while I appreciate this conversation, I'm really trying to keep this at the task today, the which is so right only yes, fun through December 30th is, with is the is CARES 52, Act money. Is 52,000 and up? That's my question. Should you be asking for 100,000 is where I'm going? Um, probably. You, are, you probably. Gonna, are you gonna be coming in December and then saying, <clears throat> well, we're assuming that the, their funding that will start again in January. And the catch is this took us completely by surprise. We had very little time to plan for it. And I really wanted to make sure that we had the staffing for our test site. I think this is something that benefits the public. It's, I, it is absolutely what the CARES Act money is for. Yes, sir. We have the money. And if we don't use it, we're going to give it back. So yes, um, there's I, no, I would, I would nothing here. that would prevent her from updating this program between now and the end of November. She's trying to get in under the wire to make sure she can keep her sites open. This will let her keep her sites open. So then if she comes back in and finds out it's not enough or she shorted a nurse or she whatever that she needed to adjust it a little bit, she has the opportunity to come sure. back at that time and do it, I believe. Is that not my, correct? My, 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 you want to earmark the is, funding for that, I can yeah. certainly submit documentation <clears throat> on a biweekly basis right. however you want me to. And but you, I'll you've already spent how much money? How much do you think you've spent to date? I'll tell you how much we have spent to date. And fortunately, I have to tell you, I have very good relations with our um, emergency operations center. So I'm just going to give you a rundown, if you don't mind. So today, um, our state operations has provided over $2,386,000 to support Putnam County. That includes almost 200000 in PPE, masks, gloves, sanitary, um, um, hand sanitizer, about $770,000 for our contract nurses and our contact tracers. Those were all pulled. <coughs> so we were doing, uh, we were blessed because we're, it's just hard to find, even our hospital's having a hard time finding. Probably about $15,000 in uh, masks and gloves, and then about $1.2 million in the cloth masks that we provided across the county to individuals so they could have the protection. So, um, and then that doesn't include the multiple missions that we have done in Interlock and in Crescent City and each of those locations. Mary, I, the I appreciate it so much what you're saying and you don't know how much I love you and how much that I know what you do for us. But if we could stay on point okay. where I could try to get the 52 for you. <laughs> okay. Just go for what, it. What you're asking you today. To shut up and no, ma'am, I'll never do that. We've been around each other a lot, and I've never said that. <laughs> Very grateful that you get it. Uh, Commissioner Harvey? Uh, yeah, Mary, I have no problem with the 52, but I do have a question. Um, how much do these individual tests cost? Not what the hospital, not the mission of $85. Tell me what a, a normal... Well, if you were going to uh, contract out, um, you would not be able to send it to the state lab. So right now, my fellow, the only cost I've got right now is would go to LabCorp, and that quest is $100 per test. Wow. All right, on the other hand, let me, and I don't mean, I didn't. What, what was the rationale that they give you? Because this is a health department run organization. This COVID is state of Florida run. We all know that. So for some reason, they came out with some metrics that said we're taking a million dollars from Hillsborough and putting it over here, did they give you any justification of the metrics behind Swanee County getting 43000 less and then that money going to Taylor County to get more? No, it actually all got pulled from every county health department. No, some of them got the more. Well, some of them might have gotten more because some of them might have gotten more earlier. So, like, some counties were able to hire those staff if you've well, got a nursing school okay. or if you've got those items. I, I don't want to be argumentative. My question is, basically, Why I was wondering if they saw, they saw a pattern developing where they took from here and gave it to your cousin. Your cousin didn't need it. They gave it to the nephew. All the funding was actually pulled from the health department into the state. 
without well, an Well, some justification had to happen somewhere. I, I've asked several times, and I'm certainly Mr. welcome Mr. you to ask, but we were told that there really was no, because listen, I was, you know. I have no problem with the 52, so I don't. I just want to know, somebody had to make up a decision somewhere that something wasn't going on here and it might be going on there. Maybe that, I guess. We haven't been given it, sir. Thank you. Are you done? Yes, I guess I my question would be, Mary, do you need it today because you can't run your test sites without this money or, or, or could you get, can we send it to the consent agenda for the next meeting? I, I would be grateful. I need to be able to bring those LPNs or I'm going to lose them because they'll go somewhere else for a lot more money. Okay, They're, well, that sounds to me like it could, uh, uh, is a con emergency situation. So. Mr. Chairman, I agree that we your, turn your mic Mr. On. Chairman, I move that we support the uh, recommendation of $52,156 to fund this through December 31st, 2020. What? On a reimbursement basis. Well, yeah, they already said reimbursement basis. Yeah, yeah, but if we can get that. I need a second. Okay. I'll second. Is there a second? 156 or 170? 176, but you can bring it up to 60 if you'd like to. 52, 176. Oh, hell, make it 52, 200. That'll be even numbers. <clears throat> I'll second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor um, to uh, give them 52. 176, is that yes, correct? Yes, sir, that's okay. correct. When that was a second, 52, 176. Okay. On a reimbursable basis. And if you need that other $24, let me know, Mary. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this issue? And it's going to be on a reimbursable basis. Yes, right. thank you. Is there any further discussion on this issue? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you for being with us today, Mary. Well, thank we you so much for your appreciate support. what you do for us. Thank you. Okay, um, next we're going to go to the uh, Sanitation Convenience Center and Highway 20 Widening Project in Interlochen. Mr. Tilton, please come forward. I'm giving him the stank look because he ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he can. <laughs> Said he better have good news. <laughs> I appreciate y'all visiting with us on this issue. A couple weeks ago, I was reached out to by Mr. Robert Ackley. He is the project manager for the Highway 20 a widening project out there that works for PNS Construction. He brought to my attention that there was no consideration um, put in place for keeping the driveway to our convenience center open um, when the widening project was designed. Wow. Oh. Yes, sir. And so. Uh, that's upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. Well, that's not our fault. Though, it's, it, it's not. It's that's, not. So it's a normal business. How did yes, that sir, get so overlooked? He he uh, he, overlook. he wanted to yeah. visit. He wanted to visit with uh, with us about some options, and so I grabbed Mr. Troxel and we met with him last Tuesday. Um, of the options, the only ones that that really um, work from a liability standpoint for the county, for the county, in my, our opinion, is to do a temporary closures of that facility, um, like on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then allow it to be open Thursday, or, or and allow it to be open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so they can work for four days, because they'll work on a Sunday. And he said that would take about three to four weeks of that. The other option is, is that we close it for the whole, um, he said it'd take, if we just were able to go through there, that, that section of the uh, project is going to take six to eight weeks. Wow. I told him that that's really not doable because um, we still need to service the, the county in that area. So I guess I wanted to come before you today and, and let you know of the situation, one. But the second part of it is, is to um, let you know that, that the options that we really have um, are those two. Um, and we would prefer, I would prefer, the, to do the temporary for, he said, probably three weeks. Possibly as many as four. Um, it just depends on what they got to do. Because what they have to do, commissioners, is if you look at the road now that's on the west or the eastbound side, it's seven foot lower than the one that's there now. They have to match that. So they've got to actually bring that road down there at the end of Hickory Lane, seven foot. And it's going to take 200 foot of our existing road entrance going to Hickory Lane that they're going to have to lower it down. And if you drive up on Hickory Lane, it goes down in the dip. The dip essentially is going to go away. I mean, in fact, it's not like they're tearing out that whole area. They're actually building a, a wall, uh, a lateral wall there on the side, and it'll be 
pitched on the other side to where it makes it all flow, and then we'll have to deal with running. So if I'm understanding correctly, Jay, is they're going to fix this issue. It's just that we're not going to be able to remain open the whole time during the issue. Yes, sir. And that's, that's pretty much what it is. And they're just and so I, I've asked around, and there was just no consideration, um, at least with those in place now here, because this, of course, has been designed for years um, as far as for this. They never even asked us, and they, they didn't even consider it. So, well, let's let's try to reach it. a solution if we can. I know. Oh, yeah, we're, we all at, we all aggravated as we can be. Let's try to reach a solution if we can. So, just trying to make sure that I'm understanding You're it before right. we go on. So, they're going to fix this issue. Yes, but sir. We're, but we are we would be able to stay open two or three days a week. Or he, he said that that was doable. He had actually suggested um, that we we close on like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But my suggestion to him is going to be Saturday is the day that our citizens are not at work, is normally our busiest days. Um, we'll do as many as 100 patrons will come in there on a Saturday um, and, and empty. So my suggestion to me is put it on the other side. So he'd already have a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But before I went and made that suggestion, uh, I wanted to bring that recommendation in front of you all. Hey, Commissioner Rawls. I haven't, I haven't been out there in a long time, but... <clears throat> How many dumpsters are out there? So at this time, we have four of the 40 yarders that are in place. For um, We have two for normal trash and CND. We have a yard waste dumpster, and we have a metal dumpster. Then on the side, we have a tire dumpster, and then we have a compactor can that we put our recyclable plastics in. Um, and then a little old bin that we use for our e-waste, and then we have our little lean-tos that we put the household hazardous waste that our inmate crews or our staff goes and picks up. Is there any chance of setting up a temporary facility, having them give you access to somewhere for the most used cans? That was brought up. I don't know that DEP would allow us to do that. Just from a liability standpoint, um, you're going to have juices that flow out of there, you know, and we are on concrete and everything like that. But that option was brought up was really... Um, but I don't know that we could get approval to do that. They're wanting to start this, so they're wanting to change the lanes uh, in the end of October. Wow. So this is something here and pretty quick that they're wanting to get on. No uh, chance of having a, 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 a detour around the construction area while they're... You'd have to go through the woods. Um, but they wouldn't be willing to... I, I, I don't know that they would. The, the problem there... Well, they, they talked about a, a temporary road through a dirt area, but there's liability on us if uh, my understanding, you know, to clean it up, and then we got a road and everything there afterwards to take care of. If, um, are you, I'm sure yeah. you done, sir, for now? Um, Commissioner Harvey, this is your area, correct? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're um, getting blamed for this. <laughs> could we, could we possibly, um, it sounds to me like we're in a situation where we're a little bit stuck here. You know, they're going to they're gonna clean it up, but it's going to take some inconvenience on the residents' part in the area. Um, what do you say that we just turn this over to Jay and or Jay Tilton and say, keep it open as much as you can, but do what you got to do? Because at some point in this thing, we got to build this road. I mean, that road going, that four-lane road going through Interlock is going to be a tremendous deal that we've all heard about since we were children. So... Uh, that's how long it's been going on. So, Terry, would that be all right with you if we just asked Jay to, and maybe if he wants Mike to help him, either one, to just negotiate as much as they can with DOT and try to keep the road open as long as they possibly can? And by all means, let's notify the fire out of people. <laughs> Let them <laughs> know about sign. it as much in advance as you yes, can. That, that, you know, they're, that if they're going to come for these certain days during this certain time, they're either going to have to come to Palaka or something. Yes, sir. And that was the purpose of trying to go out. I mean, we just met with him last Tuesday, um, was trying to get in front of you as soon as possible so that if we, if we do lean towards a decision, um, we can go ahead and get that information out to our public, put it on our website, um, and start handing out flyers is the other thing we're going to start doing with the patrons that do use that facility. Yeah, and it, do we have any kind of a list or anything of people that bring things in there? We keep paying because anybody can't bring it in, correct? No, we don't have, necessarily have a list out there because we're not, we don't have a computer system out there um, for, because over the years getting broken into and things like that. What we do is we, our normal monitoring, driver's license, make sure it's a county ID, 
and things like that. And then we have the, to abide by those. Depending on the type of garbage they bring in will depend on who can use it and then if there's a fee involved or not. Well, in situations like this, it's notify, 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 communicate, communicate, communicate. So, um, Commissioner Harvey. Jay, thank you. Um, is there any way, I mean, we can put a billboard out there that we can have an electronic sign that we could say, and, and I'm going to say this, maybe we could even cut back Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, or Friday and Saturday, if that would help them speed that process up. You know, but they're doing it everywhere yes, sir. out there. So this isn't something new. They just didn't, yes, sir. They didn't think about it. That's all they did. Yes, so, sir. but I mean, if here's the bottom line, if we don't keep it open somewhat or somewhere, it's going to be in the bushes. It's going to be, I'm yeah, going to be out there. That's where I was going. Is there, I'm going to be out there Saturdays picking it up somewhere else. And uh, you will the too, land out there. you know, and, and now Waste Pro has theirs to cross the road down Cayuga. That's C and D only. Yeah, that's C and D only. But I didn't know, along with what Commissioner Rawls was saying, is there a spot that maybe we could put two boxes there and say, okay, this goes there. But if I don't you, know if DEP if would. Been, if you've been to that facility, there's not a whole lot of room, especially because they're fixing they, their brush pits. They're trying to get rid of it, is my understanding, so they can get right. ready to put their next cell in. So, Well, I'm so with Commissioner Turner. I'm Commissioner Turner here at this point. Try to make the best deal you can. And get it moving as fast as you can. Least impact. You're saying you put a temporary road in would be responsible for owning it later. What if we put move to true temporary um, access and then get let it go back to nature? So the, the what we discussed is is they talked to Mr. John uh, Thompson, Mr. Yeah, Thompson, John Thompson. Thompson. Okay, and he gave them permission to cut a road through there if they need if they if they absolutely had to. Wasn't really want something that they wanted to do. Um, uh, their proposal was the was the temp their first one was the temporary site. They've got a cul-de-sac up the road uh, about a mile or two, um, but it's it's literally on the middle of a road that people drive by, and we just and, and like I said, I don't know that DEP is going to allow us to do that. Uh, plus, you know, if it's not if it's not cordoned off somewhat, we will have people dumping all in the in the bushes. Well, but Mr. Thompson wants to sell that property too. He's already contacted me about the county purchasing that from. Yes, so. sir. So he 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 gave them permission if they had to to build somewhat of a road, but it would all be dirt road and everything like that. Um, and then I, I'm, uh, we talk, we would be responsible for any trash or anything that blows on there, sending there to kind of clean the trash and everything up. You know, um, they would maintain it for the best of their ability. But I guess when we sat down, kind of as a staff and everything, we looked at it as look. It's three to four weeks if we could do the temporary closures. It's a short term right. um, imposition for a long-term gain. And so if we could go with some direction just like that, um, notify the citizens, let them know, um, and on the days, know that it's going to be heavy on the days that we are open. Uh, if we got to put a second truck or something out there to help overcome this, um, then, then be in a position to do like that um, and, and make the least amount of impact as possible. Is well, kind of the direction Jay, I appreciate the notice, but I've heard nothing that changes what I said earlier. <clears throat> this commissioner thinks that you should just do the best you can to keep it open as much as you can, get it through it the best we can, and notify and communicate. And if you need help with DOT, contact Mr. Troxell. Yes, sir. And Terry, that's good with you? Good with the commissioners? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Jay. Appreciate the heads thank up, you all. pal. Yes, sir. Uh, next, we're going to go to item uh, 5A <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Goddard, Dog Park Conceptual Plan. Commissioner Goddard. Thumbs up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you may have a little difficulty in that, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Has anybody looked at it? Yep. Yes, sir, I did. And if you want me to ask my first question or two, yep, right it didn't ahead. look to me like any of the install was included in any of the pricing for the equipment. Um, I don't know if anybody's contacted Beck yet to find out if he would approve this uh, use on his property. Well, I don't know. You're saying yeah, but I don't know that. So. Um, and is the, the projected site plan that was proposed to us, um, was it, did, did it follow the wetland delineation that we've already had done through water management that took a year that kept the uh, animal control facility from being on it in the first place to where, because they're not going to let us pay wetlands or what have you. So those were the questions I had at this time. The questions are yes and yes and yes. Um, 
Kevin, if you, if you would come up here, because he's, he's kind of gone through most of this. What I originally wanted to do was make trails through this area, this wet area. Um, and that can happen. We, we're still looking at that possibility. We're working with water management now, but that's not going to impact these areas, so that's not, I don't think that's going to be a problem. So you get back over on these areas, you have to have the parking area. And we have to have a paved area for the handicap. Um, the rest of these areas are nothing but fenced in areas. Uh, we have this pavilion uh, that you see right there. Um, and then the, the other is just, uh, just basically fenced in areas. But yeah, Mr. Beck, uh, he wanted to see the, the final, but uh, right now it's thumbs up. He's happy with it as long as we're using it for animals. What reason on this facility would we need a 40 by 52 building? Now, does anybody realize how, long, how big that really is? I mean, a normal pavilion is like 12 by 18 or 12 by 20. 16 by 32. True. So, yeah, so that's uh, 16 by 32 is a pretty good size pavilion. So this is 40 by 52. This is, this is definitely larger than what I oh, had yeah, originally yeah. planned. Right. And I, I have I have asked him why that, uh, but I believe my my thoughts were good. We could go down. <laughs> you don't always have to go up. I think you did this because this could fit in these areas. Yes, sir. Everything is dimensionally appropriate uh, for the space that we have to work in. Uh, as you noted with the uh, conceptual drawing that uh, Mr. Troxell and the Public Works guys were, were so helpful with. Um, everything fits inside that one area where the wetlands uh, butts up to. Uh, so the, the fenced-in area for the large dog uh, play area, the fenced-in area for the small dog play area, uh, all of those uh, along with the parking, uh, the ADA parking pad, the parking spots themselves, uh, the pavilion, uh, everything fits inside of the acreage that is there uh, without uh, infringing upon the wetlands itself. Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Question. It's going to be kind of one of those, do we build it and hope they come, or do we hope they come and then we build something? Um, Mr. Commissioner Goddard, how far back do you see these dog trails going? Because my understanding is um, they would go back almost to the back, to the back side of the Sheriff's Department. We actually, all of this property, this is that one parcel. Right, right. But the county actually owns everything that you see on that mm -hmm. paper. But do we really want to put people walking dogs no, behind the chair? No, we don't. But as you see this, part of this, this could be done in phases. I, 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 and I do believe you build it and they will come. I think they will use it. But you have to have the parking area and you'd have to have a fenced-in area, even if it's in this wet area here, if you started with just that. You've got to have these areas so that somebody can take their dog and let it loose. Well, what we originally discussed... Commissioner, I got a question. Yes, sir. Are we, do we have that big of a need out there where people are saying, because no one's mentioned to me, I need a place to take my dog to walk. I haven't heard that. And I'm not opposed to it. I just haven't heard that. I know, and, uh, but I've heard a lot of people not happy with over where there is in Francis. It's small, and there's, it's basically for training the, uh, the sheriff's dog. So they're not, but they do like to have a place to walk them. And I've seen other communities where they, they use it a lot. They use it uh, extensively, taking their dog, and they go on trails. Now, so what we originally talked was basically wilderness trails back in here. But my question is this. Could we not just build parking spaces, cut some trails through there, and see if they use it before we dump in a whole lot of money on investment yes, on building can. things? And I still think that's probably the best thing to do. Start with the parking area. I do believe you need to fence in this front area right here where it says animal wet park. 
I do believe that that That's should not be. not a splash pad, right? No, it's not a splash pad. But I do <laughs> believe that area. Circulatory system for. <laughs> that one should be fenced in so that you can take an animal in there and you don't have to worry about the animal running out into the road. What we were discussing was making these trails back in here um, so that you could just walk your dog in a wet, in, in this trail back in here. I say in the wet area, it's not all wet, but walk in this trail area and eventually I envision even bigger I envision where you can come in here with uh, the bikes bicycles and uh, you know what they call that uh, like the uh, motocross BMX motocross type stuff. where they ride the motocross through there and the bicycles and I know that has nothing to do with the dogs but it's well Mr. Goddard uh, really let me get back to something real quick I don't even see if I don't even see the need for a fenced in area because if I took my dog there, I wouldn't take him off the leash and let him run free with your dog being there. So I guess my point is, why don't we just put parking spaces, cut trails? Public Works could do that real simple, and see if people use it before we go start investing money. In and could we possibly even just start out with like just a lime rock parking area that? Right you know, and, or what have you, to just see if people are going to start using it and then get a mulching machine and go through there and just try to ask them to not cut down any cypress trees or any of the wrong deal, stay in the highest areas they can and cut a trail through there, a loop of some kind. And if people start using it, because that's a start phase one, mm -hmm. and so if people start using it at that point, then you'll know from there do you need to go build a pavilion. I can't see any reason that they'd need a 40 by 52 barn. Hell, I know farmers that's got large farms ain't got a damn barn that big. <laughs> so we don't need one of them just to like let the dogs get in the shade and put a picnic table under. So, you know, I would like to do this in phases. I'm prepared to move forward, but move forward in a phase where we put in a lime rock parking area in the proper place and then try to get a mulching machine or I don't think we have a, a heavy duty uh, bush hog or anything that we that would do that, but there's at least five people that I know of around here that have them mulching machines that don't charge that much on a skid steer loader. Yeah. That would be just about the right width for a path through there, the, the width of a skid skier. Yep. So we just let them make a path through there and a loop back around. It doesn't have to fall as long as they stay on the property and stay in dry land. It doesn't even have to follow any kind of set pattern. And then it'll give somebody a way to go in there and walk their dog, come back around and see if people use it. That would be a good experiment that shouldn't cost hardly any money. We ought to be able to put the uh, parking in at Public Works with just using lime rock, shouldn't we, Mr. Troxel? Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. Except for I believe there would have to be an ADA uh, parking so one pad. pad. You got to have. One pad. Yeah. And uh, there is a cost there that we've talked about is the connection from Highway 19 we got to have a culvert uh, to come across Curb through side. that area to get up here to the parking. But back this wet park area that we're talking about is future. But it's an area that would stay at a like a two foot level with drainage uh, so that you could let your dogs play in the water. Basically, there's a lot of places or a lot of people have dogs that they don't let them go play in the water. That's why the, the fenced in area. What we originally talked about was just a parking area, the trails going back around there, marked. What we originally talked about was, in essence, three trails. One big one that comes around there runs a mile. Cut it off a half mile, quarter mile. Well, I think what you can find is those mulching machines mm -hmm. kind of just go where the train mm -hmm. lets them go and That's where the trees let them go and they can make a a new a loop and then another one back and they can be like a teardrop and you cut it in two or three places and if you if you'll give one of them guys a lot of them have gps stuff right on their machines nowadays they could just kind of draw something in and that'll keep them as close to that as they possibly can while dodging big trees and stuff that they can't handle with their machine so um commissioner pickens would parks and recs be um able to take care of this so that it fall under your department, I guess? I'm assuming it would fall to <laughs> us whether uh, whether we could handle it or not. Uh, right. And I, I would like, I, I'm not against this idea at all, but I'd like to start 
small and then move into this, but I'd like the Parks and Rec Advisory Board to have a say in this at least. Okay, well that would be the next step in my opinion would be to send it from here to the Advisory Board uh, meeting for the uh, for them to chime in on it because you know, I have no opposition to this whatsoever as long as we start in, a, in an experimental stage and see if it's going to turn into something. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. And I think we can do it for a lot less money than was provided to us today. This, this is the Cadillac. Yes, sir. Well, today we're going to try to drive us a Buick. Yeah. You go. You go. Right. That's right. I think the, the conception here is also, you know, what we can do later on so that uh, <clears throat> our trails don't impede onto these areas that we're Okay, well, at. if it suits the commission at this point, I'm going to uh, ask that this goes to uh, Commissioner Pickens' uh, Parks and Rec Committee and that they Agreed. that go there next for uh, for review and then bring back, a, if possible, an experimental version if they're interested in moving forward with this. Okay. Is that okay with you, Commissioner? Yes, okay Thank with you. you, Kevin? Yes, sir. Okay. With that, we're going to... Uh, Move to the. Uh, is there any comments from uh, Colonel Commando? Okay. Is there any comments today from uh, Administrator Suggs? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, we don't have Commissioner. Oh, yeah, we did back before, but I passed everybody up. So too bad, so sad. <laughs> no, nope, uh, I got one. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Turner, I do have one. <laughs> just kidding, sir. Calm down. Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner Turner, I apologize. I do have one. Okay. Um, would we would like to uh, try to schedule our follow-up meeting uh, to finalize our strategic plan with the Board of County Commissioners? Uh, we finally got through uh, all the departmental plans and, and went through the whole uh, plan itself again with Ms. Karate and, and Ms. Uh, Rains. And if we could schedule that maybe for a special let meeting. Me know I'll, this coming week I'll try to set something up. Whether we want to put it on an agenda or call a special meeting or what do we want to do, I'll talk to you about it this week. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Commissioner comments. Uh, Commissioner Rawls, you have anything this evening? Um, I wanted to ask Mike. Uh, uh, I'm having a senior moment now. Survey um, on the animal services property. Yeah, I talked with uh, Wes, our surveyor today. He's got one day left. You know, I haven't done much before the end of this week. Uh, okay, cool. He was doing some roads down uh, somewhere else today. <laughs> so, uh, but one, one, one day that he's got to do, uh, locate the uh, electric and I think the, the corners or something. But yeah, he said it's a long day for him, but he can get it done in the day. Uh, Good right. deal. I think he's going to have a couple of days, actually. Uh, I've, I've, been, I've been getting a lot of uh, requests from the public wanting to know an update on the animal services building. I bet you have, what yes, sir. Waiting on is to yeah. develop the site plan and see if it'll fit. Is there any geo, uh, geotech? Is there any geological testing um, that's being performed on the property? I know that property in the past has been problematic. Um, the, it's going to have to be we uh, done tested. That, all by itself and yeah. the reason why is because mm -hmm. the further you get towards the bay is where it's been filled in previously and they had to do all the stuff over there where the retention is and where the two new pods are for the jail but that's I think field property? Huh? that's field property over there and so once you get up towards the power lines which is where we said we wanted this was right off the end of the road between the, the EMS and the, right. the uh, administrative for the jail go right off the end of that road, and that's where we want to build it, then if that's the case, it's going to take a whole different set because I do not think that's a field area up in that area. Yeah, I think it's much more stable. So that's, as soon as you all decide where this is going to be, the first thing we need to do, in my opinion, is go ahead and get us some, you know, some geotechnicals. Just, just for clarification, we're talking this area here, correct? This being, here's Ori Griffin, there's EMS, uh, this area back here. Let me see here. <clears throat> That's not showing it. Yeah, everybody's pointing up. There's, there's a the deal. It's right, what? right there. Okay. okay. Right there. You dri over. drive. This is the highway. You're driving off the highway. That's right. EMS. Go right down there and straight off the end. Right in there. That's there. stable. Right. I, was I, think, well, I think it's going to be, the, and we own that whole property. So if we had to move it over another. 100 feet or 200 feet or one way or the other, we own all the land in there, in that whole area where the power lines are. Is he surveying an acre or two? Or 
I he did the whole. We, I think we said five, didn't we? Yeah, he's, he's got okay. a lot of it. And, okay. But that'll, that'll be, so as soon as we get that, we'll put that in, um, and then we can drop in the, the building. Um, that'll, it'll automatically scale everything. Then we'll have uh, be able to lay out parking and all that. It'll be a lot easier. Okay. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay. You have anything else, uh, Commissioner? Oh, uh, Commissioner Goddard, do you have anything this afternoon? No, sir. Okay. Commissioner Harvey, you have anything additional, sir? No, we already answered. It was animal services. Thank All you. Right, good deal. Um, and by the way, I appreciate you taking on that project, Commissioner Rawls, just like the one you uh, decided to take on today. That really helps uh, with the way that we run this commission is take uh, the, your abilities and use them for the betterment of the county. Uh, Commissioner Pickens, did you have anything to add today, sir? Yeah, I did, uh, Mr. Chairman. As I said at the end of our regular meeting, um, I wanted to bring it to the board's attention, and some of you may have been uh, copied on different emails um, from Mr. Tim Ho and some of the other ones that um, uh, somebody, it's American BioClean Incorporated, has, has applied for a application with the DEP um, to um, apply biosolids in uh, District 1, South Putnam. Um, the actual area is, if you're familiar where the Crescent City High School is, mm -hmm. it's just west of there. It's part of the old Dexter Farms property. And uh, only a portion of it uh, is what they're applying for, what they're considering uh, to allow them to do this. But I thought the board um, needed to be aware of this and maybe even put it on a workshop in December. Um, Jim Triano has uh, always been so helpful in every capacity and and uh, he jumped in on this and actually put together a meeting with some of his contacts with uh, DEP and Administrator Suggs, and I sat in on that meeting. Uh, at that particular time, uh, they discussed what the applicant was applying for and how the process would work, and it seems if everything is in place that it doesn't seem like it's that bad of a deal. Um, but still, I wanted to look into this because of where it is, and it's very close to Lake Crescent. Um, so, Jim, if you have, I want to make some comments on this. Um, I did understand that after we left that meeting that we would just have an opinion on it or um, our comments on it that we really would may not see this um, before the board. Uh, but, Jim, if you just want to make some comments about that meeting and, and what your take in it is. Um, yes, sir, Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, I'm going to ask Jacob for a little technical assistance here. I wanted to show you some pictures and some things that we discussed in our meeting, and, and Commissioner Pickens is correct. So we first received notification of a biosolids uh, treatment application through the Florida Department of Environmental Protection um, in the south end of the county. And um, we looked at it, and, and biosolids themselves, and I just want to get this, if I can, Mr. Chair, will you grant me just a minute here sure. so I can get this working? Is it going to be one of them hour and a half presentations on uh, fertilizer, is it? No, sir. No. Okay. Not yet. Well, while he's getting there ready, can I ask you a question, Bill? It, um, I, I was doing some research on this company. It seems to me like they're not in compliance for what, they're, what they already have in place in Putnam County. Is that correct? Ooh, I don't know about this. I know there was another company doing it further south. Um, I don't know if they're applying anything at this time. I know that they've purchased the property because I had conversations Maybe with, that's what I'm thinking of. With, with the owner about getting power to some of his buildings. Mm -hmm. And I know he's running some cows on it, but I don't know if they're, I don't think they're, they're doing bringing, anything. They're right bringing now. in affluent from um, Volusia, correct? Yes, yeah, yeah, from the south. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I, I, I just started doing a lot of research with the company, and eventually I started finding... Uh, and this is the one that uh, Tim had sent the email on. That's what kind of got me looking into it. Am I, am I correct? Is this the one? That, are they in compliance or not? It seems like DEP had an issue with, with their, um, their permits. Tim, you're, you're going to have to come to the microphone if you're going to speak. There was a notice printed in the uh, placa paper, and I cut that out and asked people that knew what they knew about it. Had uh, quite a conversation, as I'm, I'm sure Jim has with uh, the DEP. They started like two or three years ago in this process to get 
get the approval, and it's now at the public comment stage, which is what we, you as the, the board would be doing is uh, high shelf public comment. Um, so the last thing that I saw that was real important, or I thought was real important, was the fact that the DEP kept coming back and asking more and more questions, right. especially <clears throat> for the part about how close it is. I'm sorry, but how close it is to Lake Crescent. And again, it's it's beyond my level of uh, any kind of an insight. Uh, but there were uh, a few questions that the DEP was going back again, and the applicant wasn't producing the information they wanted. Uh, it seemed to me to be worthy of further inquiry. Um, That's what the, I'm referring to. The guy in DEP out of uh, Jacksonville was, yeah, 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 they're working it, and they're going to have their own processing plant there, and it's going to dribble out. I could never tell whether or not this was, uh, and Mr. Pickens would know whether or not this was a legitimate farm or whether this was just a dump site. Uh, the part that had my concern, of course, was last year we had all this blue-green algae stuff in the river, and the experts claimed that it came from biosolids being dumped, and there's two or three different versions of biosolids depending on how much you compost them. And uh, if it's composted completely and they measure the temperatures and everything, it's just like dirt. But at the other end, it can be like, well, you know, like uh, hot cow uh, manure can kill plants real well, and then it runs on down. But they claimed that all the blue-green algae uh, problems we were having here emanated out of the Blue Springs lake somewhere down there on the other side of Okeechobee. Blue Cypress Lake. Blue Cypress, and, and it was the extra phosphorus and nitrogen that managed to get off from all the way there to get here to create that kind of a problem. And that's a long distance. From lake Okeechobee? Huh? Did you say Lake Okeechobee? Uh, it's, <clears throat> it's, it's the headwaters for the St. Johns River, I and that's where it's trying uh, to get back on, but it's, back it's on down, track here. It's, if we it's can. down that way, anyhow. It's a, it's a long distance away, and supposedly those effects didn't manifest themselves until they got into Crescent Lake and and Lake George, and then all of the submerged aquatic grasses are all gone. That's a whole different topic. I'd love to talk to you about, uh, but. <laughs> It seemed to me there was a long physical distance and it was still having an impact. And this thing was real close to Crescent Lake and it, to me it appeared it was worthy of uh, inquiry. And, and again, I'm just... Well, I totally agree with you that, it, that it, we needed to look into it and I think that's what we're trying to do here today. And, so. and, and again, DEP has had a problem of going to the applicant and the applicant coming back with uh, partial answers, answers that didn't satisfy them. And so for that uh, reason, why we have. Other, than, other than just saying, yeah, okay, it looks good, it might be worth uh, a little more, that's all. Yeah, that's why we have the EP. What do you have, Jim? Mr. Chair, if I can, on your uh, boards there and for the public, um, as Mr. Holton was talking about, on September the 5th, there was a legal notice posted in the Placa Daily News from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection concerning uh, American Bio Clean and Crescent Lake Ranch and the Class B biosolid application on that piece of property. And, and from there, um, reached out and spoke with Commissioner Pickens um, and had a meeting with the Department of Environmental Protection, myself and Administrator Suggs and the Commissioner. And they gave us a brief overview of what biosolids <coughs> are, how they apply to us here in uh, Putnam County. And the concern was as, as much raised about the St. John's River. And with biosolids, it, and if I may, I, I know you told me not to go long, but I'm just going to, just to from an education uh, opportunity here, just this is from the Department of Environmental Protection, and this is biosolids, just kind of biosolids 101. 
And what are biosolids? They are solid, semi-solid, or liquid material produced during the treatment of domestic wastewater. Um, and it also could be a solid or organic matter recovered from sewage treatment processing. And as you can see here, two opportunities, one for effluent to be sprayed on a field, and one for the biosolids themselves to be in small, uh, very um, compact um, type material and also could be spread. However, biosolids are used uh, predominantly um, as land application, as you can see here. So it is certified in the state of Florida to be applied as a fertilizer. The thing that biosolids has in it is nutrients, phosphorus and nitrogen. Two of the elements, two of the active ingredients necessary that we've seen with our algal blooms. However, the DEP is confident that based on where this location is, they would not see seepage into uh, the St. John's River. However, the concern was to Lake Crescent. And so uh, we were advised that they have monitoring stations and, and they're going through the application and the permitting process. So when we look at this, um, South Florida has banned biosolids. There's also biosolid uh, moratoriums in several counties, um, Brevard, Indian River, as it relates to uh, the Indian River Lagoon. And there are many uh, counties that have ordinances in place. So prior to today, uh, we did not find anything on file that would prohibit us from taking an active stance in this uh, permit application. Um, however, with staff today, um, and I would beg the commission's uh, um, permission to do a little more research, we found a 2004 ordinance that uh, talks about biosolids. However, our concern is whether the new biosolid process would be applicable to how the ordinance is written. If it is written, and if it's consistent based on our legal interpretation, that we believe now, based on reading this, and we only read this just a few minutes ago, that we would move to the Zoning Board of Adjustment for a special use permit. The issue that we saw earlier on was that we have one of these already in place in Putnam County, and there was no permit that was uh, at least one issued in 2019, according to the DEP. Um, so, however, we have a little more research to do based on our, our most recent findings. So, um, biosolids themselves, they are safe. They are allowed by Florida law to be applied. It's a mixture that's applied during the, um, the, the process of the crops. Um, and they talked about the cutting in that was necessary for the biosolids through our conversation with DEP. However, we do know that there can be issues associated with runoff. And if there is runoff and it gets into our waterways, that we could see an increase of nutrient loading. And with that, algal blooms if the situation um, happens to come together. So again, legally permissible, um, but now looking at our 2004 ordinance, we may have a procedure in place to not come to the Board of County Commissioners, but only to the Zoning Board of Adjustment for a special use permit. And um, since it's just new for us looking at this, we'd like the opportunity to talk to our county attorney to make sure that this is applicable. And if it is, then we'll take the actions necessary to move forward with a special use permit process. If not, we would then be left with the opportunity for the board to make a suggestion to the DEP, whether we are in favor, whether we're against, or we take no action and, and be silent. And so Commissioner Pickens, I hope that helps you a little bit um, with this process. I do want to show the map, if I can, of this particular parcel of property. Um, initially, it was a little over 100 some odd acres. As you can see here, uh, it's in yellow and light blue. Only the yellow or the rectangular area has now been identified by the DEP um, for the application itself, not this other area. So here's State Road 17, here's Crescent Lake, and here is the city down here. I'm sorry, the city here. Now, is that in Pomona Park? It's in between Crescent City and Pomona Park. Correct. So really, really right at Lake Como. So it's right behind the high school, just west of that. Yeah, here's the... Um, so, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, what I'd like to do is, Jim, thank you very much. And yes, I'd sir. like to, um, for you to do that, get that research done and get back with me and, and either way put it on the agenda for the workshop in, in December so we can see where we got to go either either way. Yes, sir. That. That's okay. But I just want to update everybody on it if they hadn't seen it. Um, 
you know, this may be something that I have really not received many phone calls on it at all, a couple of emails and uh, one phone call, I believe. But um, I think it's something that we need to look at uh, seriously. Mr. Chair, if I may, also uh, for Commissioner Pickens, this is the location of the one that was issued in 2019 in January, and it's uh, currently located uh, as Triple S uh, Plumbing Treatment Facility. However, the application site address is 550 Lake Susan Road. Uh, and the application areas of, of 26 um, acres and 35.4 acres um, near Hawthorne. Well, I know that over a period of years, and it may be different now, but years ago there were more than one uh, spread sites for uh, pump trucks and those types of facilities all over the county. And so I'm not saying this is good or bad or whatever. I'm just saying as a, as a uh, just information. So... Uh, Commissioner Harvey, you had your button first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jim, when does that give us enough time frame to bring that for you to research it and get it? Because I heard Commissioner Pickens say December. Is that right? I believe the commissioner was referencing no, us bringing it back. I'm sorry, November. Okay. Ahead of myself. okay. So it will. And the DEP, I'll make contact with them as soon as we have confirmation. They certainly can issue any permit that they like to. However, we can um, prohibit the issuance of that permit if our Zoning Board of Adjustment does not move forward to uh, allow the application. One last thing. When is the date of the one you're showing here on Lake Susan Road? 2019. And that would be something that we have no records of. We would have to go back to determine what happened with this. And if it's not in compliance, then we would move forward with um, a codes case with this and, and move forward for um, you know, having them fix what they can at this time to bring them in compliance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Rawls. So I guess <clears throat> is, is I almost get the feeling that you're, you're wanting us to come up with a policy at some point regarding this in the future. Is that correct? No, sir. I, I think we may have a policy in place. I think there may need to be more added to this policy as the technology saying, changes. You're saying you have a 2004, but it, it almost sounded like you were, you were alluding to the fact that we need to maybe take a look at that and change it. Uh, correct. Now, if, it, if it's not applicable, if there are loopholes in it, then yes, I would uh, urge you to, to renew that and to sure up those. Again, it doesn't prohibit this county from issuing those permits. It just regulates it. And I apologize for us missing this earlier. However, staff were able to find it today, this 2004 ordinance, and move forward. So, well, I, I'm, I'm aware of, of a site out in Barden that used to be used. I didn't, you know, get well, educated this as I go If on. I may, Mr. Chair, there are quite a few, according to this ordinance, that were in place uh, in 2001 and, and earlier. Um, and so I know of no additional. We really didn't do our research and to see how many others other than what was presented to us by the DEP. They truly have to permit this process of this application. And that's the only one that was uh, currently permitted. Now, the city of Palatka so this is This one is looking, the only one? I'm sorry? This is the only one? According to the DEP and their information they provided to me, yes, sir. Wow. So now the city of Palatka is attempting an application to move forward, but they have not come to fruition with that. I think there's a, that's off Lundy Road, correct? I'm not certain. I, I have the location. I, I don't remember exactly off where Lundy that was. Road. So again, there are a couple of options left in front of us, but we'll do our due diligence and I'll speak with the county attorney and um, we'll move forward from there. Well, thank you, Jim, for bringing this to our attention today and thank you, uh, Commissioner Pickens, for starting the ball rolling uh, on it. But, you know, the only thing I do is come up, Tim, if you want to speak again. Uh, the um, If you... Uh, I just caution us to say that because this may not be an appropriate location for one of these things that we say we don't do that anymore in Putnam County. So we need to make sure that we build in the criteria and the things to make sure it doesn't go in an improper place. But that's not a reason to do a knee-jerk reaction that say we don't have any more of these anywhere anymore no matter what. So I don't, I don't believe in that, I think. Set policy yeah, through the ZBOA, <clears throat> go and get special exceptions, protect the citizens, protect the waterways. surrounding properties and the waterways and all that, build all those policies into it. But uh, don't just say, oh, we're not going to ever do one of these again because there could be a place 
sometime that this would be appropriate. It, exactly, and I wouldn't want to do that at all, but I also wouldn't want to just leave us wide open to where we'll be a hotbed for these things because we are so rural. Yes, sir. And end up screwing up the development, you know, that may decide to come in because I'm not going to put it beside this. So, right. I so, agree. Okay. Yeah. What you out, Tim? A couple of three things. Uh, one, it might be advantageous to have the DEP uh, permitting guy to come in and, and give you all a talk at a workshop because he was friendly and full of information. Uh, one of the things he told me is that they have standards where they, they monitor the amount of effluent that goes out and they have a requirement that he either hay it off or, or have the cattle in there to eat it off so that the, it isn't just sticking uh, nutrient after nutrient after nutrient on the land that it's removed via the hay and that sort of thing. So it's, it's worth a little bit of time to understand it and I'm not, you know, opposed. Uh, my only, uh, again, the two things which they are at it with, with the distance, but the other one is the uh, assurances of supervision and assurances of compliance like Mr. Belanger had there was a, another one in uh, Crescent Lake area some years ago and it appeared that it was unsupervised um, that's all thank you sir appreciate it um, Commissioner Harvey, did you say you had another, you wanted another shot at commissioner comment? <laughs> I said I could do it in 30 seconds. So, okay. Jim, um, 883 State Road 20, the um, gambling house out there, I went by there last night. They are open for business. Even though we have a moratorium on internet cafes, this one has seemed to, y'all have tried to work with them, told them they can't open, they have opened and they were open for business last night. Mr. Chair, if I may, did you just see the Lucky 7 sign lit, or did you actually see people? Because we've gotten information that the sign is on, but there's no, um, no there activity going on inside. There was people out there last night with a big open sign, other than the 777 on the, on the window, open for business. And there was two or three cars in the parking lot. Mr. Chair, we have an open codes case. We've informed them that they were operating without permits. We also told them that there is a moratorium in place. Um, our code staff recently went out in the daytime. Uh, Commissioner, about what time was this that you went out there? Uh, it was about, we got done about 7.15 last night. Is that about right? About 7.15, 7.30. I'll make sure tonight on my way on State Road 20 westbound <laughs> to Gainesville tonight. Well, actually, I that think we'll, we'll that it, it would out. be appropriate to get the Sheriff's Department involved at this and this time. If they're... This is not just a simple codes violation. This They're defying a moratorium that was placed on those type of businesses by the board. So I think the next step would be to get the Sheriff's Department involved in it to see if there's anything they can do to help us in compliance. They actually asked us to do this, the Sheriff's Department. Did. We did, sir, already. And I've been speaking with Colonel Wells. Um, so we have a plan in place. Uh, we were leaving it up to the codes enforcement since we do have an open codes case. We're the ones that are able to move forward with that case, uh, but they are working with us um, hand in hand. And Don't so, the SWAT team trainees need a mission to go after? <laughs> <laughs> we'll certainly make sure that we do an inspection, a nighttime inspection, Commissioner, and uh, see what's happening, and we'll get compliance. Is it not possible to pull their CO and have the electricity shut off if I, they're not in compliance? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I would think so. I That'll mean, solve the problem. Yeah. Can you disconnect the electricity or do we need to redo our ordinance? Or I think we have to go through the special is that magistrate. state statute? I think with this, uh, Mr. County Attorney, I know that the special magistrate is our only avenue to move forward um, for cease and desist, correct? The building official has the authority to remove the certificate of occupancy. I agree. I don't know that they can do it for defying the moratorium. Though. I don't know if that's a remedy that's tied to that. Building, the, the building use occupancy is not yeah. correct. 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 correct, and they're in violation I for no permits. I kept going. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a 2019 case that we're moving forward on. <laughs> well, Commissioner Pickens likes the SWAT team <laughs> ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Yeah. Can can you take it forward as quickly as possible? I will, we, sir. Yeah, if we need to pass another rule or another ordinance or another whatever, let us know because I mean it was it's crystal clear we have a moratorium on none of, no new businesses of that type in the county until a certain date next year, I think. Yes, sir. And we're also working on another case with the sheriff's office, um, 7300 Krill Avenue. Um, so we're working with them on that, and our codes officers are actively moving forward. I'll have information to Mr. Suggs tomorrow on that, and we'll have direction. It looks to me like these type of businesses are as hard to uh, to police as child care centers because people bring three kids to another person who who knows. You know, it's, it's just hard to main, it's just hard to uh, do anything about that. So if they're going to bring three machines in and turn a put an open sign on the door and they run extension cords to the three machines, it's all illegal all the way through. But until you catch them and you can do something about it, it's hard. So we think we certainly thank the complainants that have come forward either through the sheriff's office or the complaints that we've received from the citizens, and we are moving forward on on those cases. Okay. Can you, um, I don't think we can legislate morality. So if you're not, if you're going to have people that just absolutely decide they're not going to go by the law, so I don't think you can pass additional no, laws if they're not going by the existing laws now. We have the laws in place. If, if we say uh, per ordinance, there's, there's no gambling establishments like that. I think you have to offer some place. But you, you know, do have to? Yeah, I don't think you can just say you can't have it anywhere because it's kind of, I think by law they're allowed in appropriate locations. We just have a moratorium on them for now while they're trying to get to that area. And at one time they thought that they might be legal completely, but that never came to fruition, I don't believe. So that's why we've been kind of moving it on. Mr. Chair, we do have a meeting tomorrow with... <laughs> We have a meeting tomorrow with the sheriff's office to discuss a, a draft ordinance for uh, internet cafes, and we're working with our county attorney on bring, that. Bring them to us at a workshop, and we'll take a look at it unless it turns into an emergency situation. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Does anybody else have anything to come before? Any more thirty-second options that to come was before not the my fault. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ran with okay. the ball. I did. Just threw it out there. Well, I'd like to say I think this has been a very productive meeting. I appreciate everybody kicking in uh, like they have. And, uh, you know, it, sometimes it gets lost in the works as we go along that um, that we, uh, we get a lot of things done um, and a lot of things accomplished as we go along. Um, I, uh, I'm very happy to see that, uh, that the way that we've, gone to doing business in the last three years where we assign commissioners uh, duties outside of their commission, usually when they ask to do it. Uh, that's never been done before that I know of in the history of our county. So we, it's, it's made us get a lot of good things done, and I think it'll be a good way to move forward uh, by uh, doing things just like Commissioner Rawls did today by, by uh, um, saying that he would help with that project because he has a skill set to do it. Um, Commissioner Piggins is still working, I understand, some with um, the, um, the parts department or the uh, vehicle maintenance department with their parts. And I think uh, uh, now that they're under Executive Director Troxel, I think they're all working together to help that. Yeah, I would like to add to that because I'd really, you know, appreciate, you know, the structure that Terry Suggs put together and we approved. Uh, and that's going to pay big dividends because Mike and I have already had a number of conversations about ways to to improve, um, you know, the fleet maintenance and, and the service of our vehicles and stuff. And uh, Bill Rulon's kept in the picture, and and um, so I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I do too. I think us taking that attitude moving forward is going to is going to help tremendously. Um, the uh, like it has in the past, it's paid big dividends. Landfill, for instance, landfill, we're going to knock $41 a year off the assessment this year on top of, it, of, a, uh, of the tax uh, decrease that we did, the other millage rate decrease. So I think all these things line up that just it's a good way for us to move the county forward and a good proper way to do it and, and the, using the team to try to work together to try to get there. 
So with that being said, if there's no more business to come before the uh, workshop this afternoon, I hereby adjourn.